Well, hello there, listeners, and welcome to the brand new installment of Dead and Lovely. Here with your very special guest host, it's me, Tazon Day of Chocolate Rain fame. Chocolate Rain. And me, Seattle. Fraser Crane. <laughs> <laughs> Let me toss your salad and scramble your eggs. I don't know what to do with this tossed salad and scramble eggs. I dislike that dog we have. I hope this is getting everybody's subwoofers just a rumbling around in the yeah, automobiles. I hope it's like that commute. in that Howard Stern movie where that lady uses the subwoofer and he like just goes like yeah. into it and it's like a vibrator. I haven't seen that. No, it's not. It's not like necessary to see. Okay, but it's it's okay. I'll it's remember that. That should be on the box. Not necessary. Not to necessary see, to see. It's okay. It's okay. Hollywood Steve. Yep. <laughs> Dead level listeners. I'm just pulling y'all's leg. It's not Tazon Day. No. It, it's your homeboy Uncle Ben here with 150 percent more chest phlegm. Whoa. So you guys are getting treated to my very sexy, rumbly Sultry radio voice. voice. Oh man, do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> Yeah, spring has sprung, and uh, it has all settled in my, my chest area. Ooh, buddy. It's just been kind of sitting here for a couple of days. Thankfully, it held off. I had a skankbanger show last week. Yeah. So I was up there just singing and prancing uh-huh. around, and then the next day I woke up, and I was like, oh, oh, I'm a bass now. Now I can like I can sing Tom Waits backups and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 But definitely not Bon Jovi backups. No. Those are off the menu. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have a show for another couple of days, so that's a good thing for me. So in the meantime, you guys enjoy. Uh, you'll probably hear me doing that Taze on Day signature, turning away from the mic to, to breathe technique. Uh-huh. Only I'll be like coughing and clearing my I throat. Turn away from the mic to cough. Yeah. I'll try to edit out as many of them as I can, but bear with us. If you don't like it, we'll give you a refund. Hey, and it's me, the guy with a normal voice, Hollywood Steve. How are you doing this week, Hollywood Steve? Uh, fine. Yeah. I, You're feeling uh, good? Yeah, my sign. Well, I, I take, uh, I take uh, what is that? Like a Claritin or something? Something like that. Yeah. Sure, Zyrtec, yeah. Zyrtec, maybe. Zyrtec. Yeah. That's it. I take Zyrtec I'm regularly. I'm a Claritin man. Oh, we'll see. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's my problem, man. Oh, man. Some of those those pollens are like, Claritin, get the fuck out yeah, of here with that shit. Yeah, give me a fucking break, dude. Wow. Look at this. I mean, honestly, it might be due more to the fact that we just had another one of those like famous Tennessean bipolar weather changes. Yeah. It's been like it, 40 degrees at yeah. night. It was 90 last week. Yeah. It, it feels great to me, but it is certainly cold. It feels like yeah. fall. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It feels like late October in Tennessee right now. Yeah. Every time it does that 180, it, it fucks my shit up. So. Yeah. I get that. Yep, yep, yep. So you been uh, watching anything good lately here, Stu? Yeah, yeah. My wife and I just had uh, our anniversary, and we we went out to eat. Uh, got us a nice burger yeah. at Stock and Barrel here in Knoxville. Pro move. Real good. Professional maneuver. Yeah. Pie there. Awesome. Slice that, that flash pie, fried huh? feta Look with out. baguette and honey. Sacre bleu. Was the star of the meal. And My word. literally, like, if, if you just want... Some cheese and bread. It could be a meal for seven bucks. Like, right, yeah. It's just a slab of feta flash fried, but like, it's filling. All right, then. It's good, man. That sounds pretty good. What year anniversary are you guys celebrating, Steve? Uh, this is our ninth wedding anniversary. Yeah? So, yeah. But the big nine. Looks like we made it. Look Looks how far like we've come now, made baby. made it. <laughs> are you guys going to go uh, get knocked up and get an abortion to celebrate? Just, yeah, it's just for fun. Just for the just fun while we off. still can. Just to flex on people. Yeah. Just yeah. to say, just to look back and be like, you know what? We had us one of those yeah. back in the day. Might get two in a row just for fun. Just say that we could. Yeah. Because it's going to become a thing of the fucking yeah. past. Fucking assholes. Fucking assholes. Yep. If, if, you know, if you're listening to this... Uh, not when it comes out, but at a later date. This is on the on the eve of Alabama's new abortion bill and stuff like this that just basically outlaws abortion. Uh, it's an anti-choice, yeah. anti-choice bill. Yeah, it's here's ridiculous. a here's a wild fucking idea, Steve. Mm-hmm. If you don't support abortions, yeah, maybe don't have one, dickwad. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of working that out for you. Like, yeah. And if you don't like gay marriage, maybe don't marry don't a gay, gay person. Married. Yeah, yeah, don't get gay married. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's it really just fucking pissing me off, dude. Because like in in the legislation and stuff, the way that it's worded is like yeah. if you're six weeks pregnant, you can no longer have an abortion and stuff. Right, and, and dude, if you if you do, you'll be charged with murder. Yeah, but and dude, the punishment could be up to ninety nine years. What if like you're a chick and you're on your you know your fourth week of your cycle? Yeah, and you go on a two week vacation. Yep, and while you're on vacation for two weeks, you're like, oh shit, I've skipped my period. I must be pregnant. Yeah, but I'm out of state. 
they don't accept my insurance, I can't even get this taken care of. Well, also within the bill, if you get a, an abortion out of state, yeah, you will be charged anyway. with a crime when you come back. That's unbelievably yeah. stupid. Yes, it is. And dude, like, and, and I don't want to get just way too, way too personal about this, but especially if you've been on like birth control for a long time, like, yeah. like my wife has, mm-hmm. sometimes you just go six weeks without getting a period and you're like, yeah. oh, it's just because I'm on the pill. You would have no idea. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Then right. week seven comes around and you're like, oh, I'm actually pregnant mm-hmm. and shit, it's too late to do anything about it. Yep. That's fucked up, man. It's way fucked up. It's yeah. the worst. Handmaid's Tale. Not an instruction guide. A precautionary tale is what it's supposed to be, guys. Precautionary. Yeah. I, earlier, t- like, I I didn't sleep much last night because yeah. of this, yeah. honestly. I, 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 got, I got a couple hours of sleep, and this afternoon, I was just ready to move out of the South forever and never come back. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, just fuck it. Let it burn. Right. It's its own goddamn fault you're just trying to fall back into the past at this point yeah making no effort to try to like keep with yeah the present you know just trying to control people they're trying to control Dude. and and manipulate and it's it's the worst i swear but, i swear man like even a matter of five years ago yeah if you would have ever told me do you think roe v wade will ever be up for debate i would be like no are you fucking yeah kidding? that's it's, decided yeah it's 2015 yeah get with the times old man and yeah. now I'm like, oh shit. Well, I mean, we can we can blame Democrats for that because when they had control and could have passed a law making it a federal law that abortion is, right. is available, not state's choice and stuff, not state's choice, then this wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, but no, you're every, right. Every time we vote moderate, uh-huh. neoliberal Democrats, afraid in, we might offend somebody. Afraid we might, yeah, yeah. Get some balls. Yeah, fucking get some vote fucking for balls. somebody with balls. Vote for the person who says no. Fuck this. We're gonna fix it. Not yeah. the person who says like both sides and you know mm. uh, blah blah blah. It's their choice. It's not their choice because the people in this state didn't make that choice. Right. The people in this state didn't vote for that the people they voted for voted for that yeah they didn't know they were gonna make that law it's just ridiculous to me yeah. so like the more i thought about it and that you know and my my buddy dj lewis uh he's way super smart uh when it comes to stuff like this and he's he's been talking about this for a while with georgia's abortion bill which also i think you know uh is is way up there as to how terrible it is i mean alabama just like shocked the world with even worse shit Uh like before that it was georgia yeah uh and he was talking about hollywood pulling out of georgia Ooh, i hadn't thought about that yeah because that's kind of like the mecca of of entertainment production right now yeah Yeah. and and it could be you're gonna see major it could be majorly economically viable for the south to Uh, become the new hollywood i was gonna say like the amount of revenue that's been generated since they've yeah. been filming in atlanta and stuff yeah. has been huge yeah and they've been filming the in atlanta and north carolina for a long uh-huh. time yeah and we're fixing to fucking kiss that stuff goodbye yeah and you know? my buddy dj lewis made the the best point, point was that the what hollywood doesn't need to pull out they need to make change right that's what they did with california Mm, mm. They went in and they made change. You have the money. You have the economic pull. You can change the laws. Now, I don't like that that's the way it is. But since that's the way it is, we got to stay here and make a change. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and if we really want it to change, if like the world, if the, the you know, all the people looking at the South and are going like, what the fuck? And Ohio also recently passed uh-huh. a six week yeah. abortion thing. Uh, all these people looking at it. Money is what we need. Yeah. We need money to fight it. Mm-hmm. So help us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just uh, I know Jordan Peele and and somebody else. Were, they they dedicated their paychecks on something to um, fighting this abortion law in Georgia. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like they're fucking, trying. Yeah. They're trying. Try. Right. Uh, well, obviously, because our politicians on both sides have fucking failed us, and they're not listening to us. Absolutely. That's not. the worst part. But the thing is. Well, They're dude, not like, going to listen when you keep picking the most moderate motherfuckers. Right, yeah. Pick the ones that say what you want. Because that's what the GOP did. That's what the Republicans did. They picked the fucking extremists. Yeah. And now they're getting what they want. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, we all are acting like, oh, no, no. They must also see the problem here. No, this is the world they wanted. Right. They wanted this world. They're making the world they wanted. We need politicians to make the world we want. Right. Right. 
Yeah, so exactly. Fucking and, fight. And, and moderates aren't the ones that are going to do No, it. they're fucking not. Yeah. We don't need another. We don't need. Uh, like, I, I, I get the idea of having uh, a more moderate president, a president yeah. who's willing to work with both sides. Because oh, yeah. That is exactly the job of the president. It should be. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, not but everyone in America is going to play by the same. Yeah. The same rules and abide by the same customs and stuff, obviously. But we don't need another. I mean, what's the best way to phrase it uh another twat burger yeah. in the <laughs> office who um keeps signing like bill clinton did and obama did yeah. keep signing bank deregulations and financial deregulations yep. that in- destroy our economy right and letting it happen all the while just saying the nice things that they know democrats want to hear yeah we don't but need that n- yeah we need someone who's like no 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 i'm gonna say the nice thing you want to hear because i'm gonna make sure that happens yeah exactly and we're going to say the thing that's not nice to a lot of other people. Yes. And they're going to deal with it because it still and needs to happen. And slap Mitch McConnell's turtle fucking head off. God damn. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Oh, man. It, it drives me crazy, dude. It drives me crazy. She drives me crazy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we threw politics into planet terror. <laughs> Happy anniversary! Happy Thanks for anniversary. Be sure to rate and review on iTunes. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, but after we after we went on our anniversary dinner, we came oh, home yeah. Good and diversion. Uh, watched the the Meg. Oh, oh. We we, ooh. Get, we started drinking, and as I've said about you know because we got HBO for Game of Thrones, I'm trying to like squeeze everything out of HBO for oh, two months. Wait, hang on. The what, Meg's on HBO. What was that D word you used a second ago? You were the uh, the uh, do- Dorinkling. Oh, drink, drink, drinking, drinking, drinking. Drink. That's what I'm not right. doing right now. Oh, Steve. we could be doing that. Yeah, because if I'm going to talk about the mag, I need, yes. I need to, to get a pull. Well, we followed it up with some other bullshit. So you just wait. I definitely need to get a pull. <laughs> We've got ourselves some very magical beers here that were sent to us by our main man Ryan. Ryan. What up, dude? What a sweet, sweet feller. He Ryan's sent us great. a bevy of local beers from his homeland. And uh, I'm really excited to try this first one out here. This is from the Pontoon Brewing Company. It is their honorary Girl Scout Samoa Nut Cookie, which describes itself as a milk porter with chocolate, caramel, and toasted coconut. Yeah. It's basically like a Samoa cookie. I'm excited about as this. As a beer. Those are the best Girl Scout cookies. Thank you, right? Yeah. Everybody's like the Thin Mints. Thin Mints are fine. Yeah, they're good. I love them in the freezer. You yeah, yeah. The oh, freezer. yeah. You freeze they're them. Yeah, better. those are perfect. Wonderful. Nice, cool. You come in. There you go. Yeah, you get yourself a beer right off the lawnmower. Then when you come in, Thin Mint out of the freezer. Yeah. Whoo, that'll cool, cool you, you off. Cool you down yet good. <laughs> but the Samoa is absolutely the number one jam. Yeah, it is. I love it's it. It's my favorite for sure. What's your least favorite? Oh, gosh. I mean... Damn, I, I don't know. What's the one with the jelly in? Is that a dosi dough? It's got like raspberry or something oh. jam in the middle. Yeah, those are like disappointing. They're a little disappointing. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. just kind of like lame. I, I don't th- think that's dosi dough though. I think dosi doughs are the ones with peanut butter, which are great. Yeah, yeah, those are okay. What are those dumb ones with the white chocolate and oh like right. currants or something in there? Those are new, right? They're yeah. newer. They're very annoying. Yeah, not delicious because it's kind of like a it's kind of like a scone. I like a trefoil, trefoil, trefoil. Those are like the, however you say the it. shortbread. Those rides, are just the shortbread, they? but they're like perfect. Yeah, I like they're, they're not crumbly like a mm. lot of shortbread. Let's find out about this thing right here. It's developed quite the frothy top on this thing. Oh, buddy! It smells phenomenal. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that smells like dessert. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking it's wow. probably going to taste about like a dessert as well. That I'm really does it. smell like everything that it said that it was. Cheers! Cheers, motherfucker! Happy anniversaries to both of us. Mm-hmm. We we both just enjoyed. Another year with our darling dears. Oh, my God. Is that beer just fucking ridiculous? Is it good? What is that? That is dessert in a glass. Holy moly. It feels so thick in your Whoa. mouth. And it's so chocolatey and like there's a bit of coffee. And it's like a toasted coconut toasted flavor, Toasted coconut flavor, yeah. When it said coconut, I was kind of like, uh, it might taste like, you know, they put Malibu rum in it. Just like the artificial like coconut flavor. like that coconut, which was good, but it was like yeah, not. I grew it tired very, of it. Yeah. 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 No, this tastes like toasted coconut. It's like yeah. a little more mild. Ooh, Definitely buddy. a lot of the caramel and stuff in there, too. Yeah. God. That nailed it, man. That is so good. I love it, man. Okay. So you had never watched The Meg before. <laughs> I had not watched The Meg. And you loved it. I hated every second but of it. But shark movies are always good. There's like they're rarely there's like good. One. one is good. One is okay, good. Okay, so there's one. Uh-huh. <laughs> man, I mean, first off, it was just 
Lake Placid, but with sharks. Kinda, yeah. Uh, the shark kept changing sizes, just like Godzilla. And then it did. That thing's size movie. was very, very hard to pin down. Yeah, yeah, pretty stupid. Um, most of the dialogue was real bad. Did you like the pacing of the movie? Because no, I, I hated didn't. it. It's terrible. <laughs> I hated it all. Like the first maybe third of the movie is this whole like, oh, your your ex wife is down, stuck in the bottom of this submarine at the bottom of the ocean. We got to have a rescue mission. You're like, okay, so it's a rescue mission movie, and then nope. it's like they rescued them. Okay, now what else is this movie about? We still have like an hour and 20 left. Right. Oh, it's so long. There's a shark. Oh, man, but we got the shark. No worries. Yeah. Oh, but there's a second, there's a second shark. One. Got bum, it. Bum, bum. Yeah. It's kind of like a trilogy of shark movies that they were just like, that you know, are all let's bad. just rip that band yeah. and get them all done at once. It's fucking terrible, dude. I really could not deal with Ruby Rose's character, Jack. Yeah, yeah. So badass. Um, yeah, it was just that over the top, like, it, like when some uh, uh, a dude tries to write a badass girl character. Yeah, yeah like like a Michael Bay character was in the movie. Yes, it was yeah. a Michael Bay character in the movie. Yep. I'm glad that you hated it. If you came back and you're yeah. like, oh, man, I fucking loved it. Ten I out of may- ten. I would have been like, uh, we okay. need to talk. So Emily does this all the time, where she'll choose a movie. And it's like, I don't know what it is. Every time we're scrolling through movies, Mm -hmm. she picks the exact movie that my mind had just looked at and thought, fuck that. Yeah, not that one. And she's like, what's that? (laughs) That one. So this time, like, we started watching it, and about 20 minutes in, she went to the bathroom, and I paused it, and she was like, why are you pausing it? And I was like, because you're watching this movie. Exactly. You signed us up for this. so I made her watch the whole movie. Did she hate it, too? Yeah, she hated it. The whole thing. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, we also watched The Nun. Okay, I want to hear about this because I have not seen it. Uh, anybody <laughs> that listens to the show knows that we're not necessarily a fan of yeah. the whole controversy. Right, yeah, like there's there's some definite issues. Um, the Nun, um, have you seen Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight? Yes. You've seen the better version of The Nun, and oh. The Nun stole the ending. Of Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Really? Like, exactly. No kidding. Like, covering yourself in the blood of Jesus and spitting it out of her mouth. Oh, like exact. Exactly. Like Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. What a weird thing to steal from. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, huh. It's bullshit. It's not good. A lot of jump scares. Yeah, a lot of jump scares. But it was much more watchable than The Meg. Like, by far. Wow. There's so much exposition in it. Because it's part of a huge universe now. So they have to keep explaining stuff to connect it to everything else. Right, yeah, yeah, because it's a part of the whole world of Annabelle and all that yeah. stuff too, right? Yeah, but it was it wasn't fun. I'm not shocked. It wasn't a fun watch. Yeah, I heard that it was pretty much shit. But we did watch one thing. Okay, that was fucking awesome. All right, we watched that new extended cut of Deadpool two. Okay, I've been wondering about this too. It's I, awesome. I saw it pop up on Hulu. It's like, like 15 minutes longer. Really? Yeah. Is it more like graphic or yeah? Gross some of the like what? the uh, uh, what's when the point out oh like when he's fighting all the um japanese the yakuza guys yeah, yeah. in the sauna uh-huh. that's much longer oh cool more, uh, yeah it, most of the fights and stuff are much longer more graphic Dude, why wouldn't they leave that in well i think you know they wanted the r rating they didn't want to go in c17 uh, okay yeah it was a rating thing but they also what they did was they they used some different takes and they used some different because like Ryan Reynolds did a lot of imp- a lot of them did a lot of improv oh, really? and they had like a whole bunch of different alternate lines and mm-hmm. stuff cool. so this actually has alternate lines and things and some of the things that happen in the original don't happen in this like oh. you know how like in um, in the original like every time Wade would see Yukio he'd be like hi Yukio and she'd yeah, like, hi, hi. And they, so took, cute. they took that out and gave him another a different back and forth that they did oh, so like I that's mean, cool yeah it's cool it's like it's definitely worth the watch I mean first off might as well rewatch Deadpool 2 anyway yeah because it's it's a great movie yeah, I love it it's amazing yeah. I think it might be better than the first one honestly um yeah I think so there's also more colossal like he talks more oh yeah yeah he does there's some more talking that's cool because there's so many of those like extended or director's cuts that you watch and you're like, what was different? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you look back and you're like, I guess maybe it was like two seconds different in this one mm-hmm. scene. Or like he said, fuck right there instead of duty. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but the fact that they put in all these alternate takes and stuff, that way it really feels like, yeah, it's a different version of the same movie. Yeah. That's so cool. 
Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's definitely worth a watch. Awesome. I don't know if it's better or same level or whatever yeah, yeah. than the original, but it's good. I want to watch that PG thirteen like Once Upon uh-huh. a Deadpool. We as almost well. watched that too. <laughs> I'm dying to watch that. Like at first, I thought it was just you know whatever. It's just an edited cut or whatever. But yeah. I read the description on Hulu and it said it was like narrated by Fred Savage. Uh-huh. It's done like the Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. Yeah. Oh shit! Is it really? Yeah. That's what I was hoping for because when I read it was like a storybook presentation mm. read by Fred Savage. I was like, oh my god! Is yeah. like Princess Bride. It's PG thirteen. And I'm wondering, because like, that was why Emily was like, oh, no, I don't want to watch that. Because yeah, yeah. she thought, like, you know, it, it won't be as funny. But I'm wondering if they did it in a way so that it is funny in a different uh, dude, way. I'm More sure Princess that they Bride did. funny. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. I can't wait, man. I can't wait to yeah, watch that. Yeah, I gotta that. check it out. I'll definitely gotta watch all those, man. What yeah, I, uh, I had myself a pretty busy week. I got three movies that I want to talk about as Let's well. Let's hear it. I have, dude, the past, like, two weeks have been non-stop so like last saturday i was supposed to be very productive and do stuff it was the night after a skank banger show and i woke up at noon and Mm -hmm. you know had to take my makeup off and stuff like that and i was just like i'm beat it's like my gas tank was on empty i was like i really just need to lay around and watch movies today (laughs) exactly song's awesome yeah it is great so I just decided Saturday to lay around and watch a bunch of movies. Kate was at work, so I was like, I need to watch some piece of shit movie yeah. that she will definitely not be interested in watching. So what'd you watch? I watched Hellraiser Judgment, <laughs> the newest Hellraiser sequel that came out, yeah. I think, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. It is really terrible. <laughs> that is a <laughs> franchise, I've dude. I, I just cannot figure out why no one has understood what makes Hellraiser tick. Like how they've watched yeah. the first one and two, and then they've been like, I, I don't know, I guess they're bad guys that like to hurt people. Yeah. And that's what they get out of Hellraiser. And then they get to make movies. That's what blows my mind, dude. It's like, not only is it the fact that people don't even remotely understand the Cenobites or what makes those first two movies good, well, right. especially the first and the second one's not great, honestly. It's not great, but it's fine. It's fine, yeah. Mm-hmm. But people completely misunderstand that. And then they also are given millions of dollars buy a studio to make a Hellraiser movie. Yeah. Well, it's the name that the studio sees. They don't recognize... A lot of those executives are not story people. They don't recognize why people like a movie. Yeah. They just know that they like that movie. Well, the last several Hellraiser movies were just like spec monster movie scripts and they were like, I don't know, put Pinhead in it. Just turned it into Hellraiser. Yeah, exactly. It was that kind of Uh, thing. It does seem like it it could be primed for uh, a reboot and could be done well, but I, I feel like any reboot would just make them more the villain yeah instead of going back to no they're these weird uh neutral dimensional neutral yeah. demons that only harm the people who want to be harmed yeah exactly like the people who seek them out yeah, yeah. so this movie is like nine inch nails closer the movie <laughs> I want to fuck you like an animal, <laughs> says Pinhead. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Man. We have such sense to show you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just try to I'll try to like sum this up. The, okay. fir- the first part of the movie, you have this guy who is a pedophile that mm-hmm. is uh, taken to this house and he's tied up in a chair and he is asked all these questions by this guy called uh, I think he's like the auditor. Which actually is a pretty cool character. Yeah. He seems like he's like a guy that kind of like figures out if people are scummy enough to interact with the Cenobites. Which Hmm. is like, okay, kind of a cool idea. That's interesting, yeah. He's got these cuts all over his face and stuff. Okay. So he sits down with this like pedophile child molester guy and he's like, he like asks him about all of his crimes. So like, tell me about everything terrible that you've ever done. And so the guy tells him, he types it all out onto, onto paper and it leaves the room. Mm-hmm. Next, uh, a really nasty, like, fat guy in an open-shirted suit comes in, and he gathers the stack of papers with this guy's crimes on it. He moistens them with a bottle of Tears of Children, and then <laughs> sloppily eats it. And he's, like, drooling and as he mm-hmm. eats up this guy's crimes Right. as he does this. Uh huh. Then the guy goes over to the other side of the room where he throws up into this like funnel thing that leads into the wall. Uh-huh. So he just disgusting like vomits up all this paper and stuff that he's just eaten. Then it shows us on the other side of the wall where that funnel leads out to. It's like spitting the dude's vomit into like a trough where these three 
half naked like chicks with their boobs out and their faces ripped off then muddle through his vomit with their hands and to declare if he's guilty or innocent they, uh-huh. they declare him guilty this seems to take actually from clive barker's everville yeah novel. yeah a little bit it is just so going out of its way just to be gross and nasty well i i was mistook when i just said everville i meant weave world but um yeah that's interesting it's just dumb it's just really dumb man and then like do you Hmm. mind if i spoil it a little bit i don't give a shit you don't give a shit at all (laughs) have you ever seen i think it's like hellraiser seven or eight where it's like okay (laughs) well the thing is three if it's past the one with winona ryder dude i haven't seen it i can't wait to get into some of the sequels on the show (laughs) they're so bad basically in one of the later sequels there's like these cops that are on the lookout for this murderer Mm mm-hmm and then it turns out that you know there's like a dirty cop among them that was killing the people and stuff. Oh no! This movie does literally the same thing. This movie also has a dirty cop in it. Huh? It's ridiculous. Just recycling yeah. failed attempts yeah. from the past. Yeah. So wow. it kind of has this like Hellraiser meets Seven because this the guy that's doing the murders is killing based on the Ten Commandments. Yeah. It's horrible, dude. It sounds real bad. It's yeah. just really fucking dumb. Would not recommend. All right, I'll be sure to watch. <laughs> Uh, we watched Oceans 8. Ah, I just watched this about a month ago, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, me too. Like, I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I was really going into it thinking, like, this is going to be, like, Ghostbusters, the, you know, the newest Ghostbusters, right. where they just redid a movie that didn't need to be redone, only this time with chicks, yeah. because well, chicks... Well, I mean, I, I would say that's inaccurate. They re- They took a title and then made a movie that was so very different yeah. and not not coherent i think in the end like the problem wasn't like even if it would it was just that it wasn't that related to the original it still could have been a good movie it just wasn't very coherent in the end like i remember seeing it a second time on tv somewhere yeah and i was watching it and i was like trying to follow what was happening and realized like oh this movie doesn't make any fucking sense right yeah it's real dumb anyway yeah but oceans 8 it was a pleasant surprise man i enjoyed yeah, it I it's enjoyed at least better i'm not gonna say it's better than oceans 11 but it's at least better than 12 and 13 yeah it's better than those yeah there were um there were definitely reasons why i think they could have improved it a little bit mm-hmm. but I really enjoy. I mean, it, it fits the formula. That's yeah. exactly the thing about the Oceans movies. Is it's pretty much formulaic. Like, there's, you know, there's going to be like several twists near the end, and they're going to show flashbacks of stuff they didn't show us before. And yeah, it's going to be fun. I like heist movies as a thing. Me too. Like, I'm always just kind of a sucker yeah. for like a good like. Oh, how did they pull it off? What like did I Avengers miss? Endgame. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, time heist. Time heist. Time heist. Yeah. So good, man. Yes, yeah, so Oceans Eight Pleasant Surprise. We also watched Tag. Oh, yeah. How Tag did you was, feel about that one? It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. It's got like, some heart to it. Yeah. Definitely like a little a, too much, honestly. Yeah, that kind of does drag it down at the end. Yeah, towards the yeah. end of the movie, like I'd say the last third yeah. got a little like walking in place. Like, I guess we, this is where the movie should get kind of emotional and stuff. Uh, how do we make that happen? I feel like it would have been better if... I mean, spoilers for Tag. Yeah, I mean, you out. can't really spoil it. it yeah. It's not about this, but if they had revealed that the guy had cancer from the beginning and that's why he wanted the tag game to go and that yeah. was kind of the thing about it, that would be much more interesting than it being like a third act reveal. Yeah, exactly. Just out cancer. of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. That was what bugged me about it too, yeah. honestly. But the first like, you know, half of the movie. It's fun. A tag game against Hawkeye. Yeah. Cool. It's funny. Yeah. Jake that, Johnson's funny. Hannibal Burris. Hannibal John Burris Hamm. is in there. Yeah. 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 So it's some good, some good stuff in there. A decent Saturday afternoon watch, which yeah. is exactly what it was. There you go. Now, Steve, the subject of our podcast today is Planet Terror, oh, which is a little film. I'm afraid. Oh, it's the whole planet of scare. Oh, no. Oh. And it's a movie made by one Robert Rodriguez. That's the one. An aspiring independent filmmaker who had yeah. some ideas of his own about what he thought 
he would like to see up on the silver screen. And that led him to make stuff like El Mariachi and mm-hmm. all kinds of great flicks that we all know and love. Dust yeah. Till Dawn, yep. Desperado, Desperado. Desperado, which yeah. I love. That yeah. movie's so good, It's a great good, one, man. Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Yeah. All sorts of great stuff. But you know what? At one point, all of those great film ideas, they all start off as maybe scribblings on a napkin or maybe even just a regular old note card, like what I have in front what? of me right here. Steve, have you ever had an idea for a movie that you like to see? Well, you that know, you ben, put on some cards <laughs> as we slide on in to the preview palace. Welcome. <laughs> See, Can I do it this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the preview palace. Yeah, we reversed it. It's really it. sexy now. Yeah. It's really sexy. That was good. Flem. <laughs> <laughs> Flem. It's what um, sex is made of. <laughs> Ew. That's gross. It's what that's sex real. Sounds gross. like it Ew. does a little. I maybe, guess. maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a movie pitch for you, Ben. Okay. It's a it's a, a sweet little redneck exploitation short. Redneck exploitation. Redneck exploitation. <laughs> and let me tell you, Ben, this is how this movie came to me. Now, am I the big wig Hollywood producer right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch this to you and I I wanna I wanna hear Okay. I want to hear some of your ideas okay. here. So as you guys are listening to this, imagine I'm wearing like a shark skin suit. Uh-huh. I'm I'm sipping multiple cups of coffee. Yeah. I keep checking my watch. His knees are jittery because of all the cocaine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and the coffee too. Oh yeah, the I'm coffee very doesn't sensitive. help. Yeah. yeah. As sensitive as I am to caffeine, I bet cocaine would just I'd be running <laughs> the damn walls. I think man. they operate differently, but yeah, probably. Probably so. Yeah. Probably so. So as you're as you're listening to this, let's let's just imagine <laughs> Uncle Ben. Big wig Uncle Ben. Yeah. Okay, lay it so, on me. So you got this pitch for this red exploitation. For a Molly Hatchet listening session. <laughs> As one does. As one does. As one I, does. You I admired think... the majestic Frank Frazetta album artwork. Uh, yeah, with the big warrior with big the Viking. fucking battle axe. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It, I think I'd heard it maybe at like a restaurant or a, a grocery store earlier in the day. Bowling alley. Was at a bowling maybe, alley? Maybe I was at a bowling alley yeah. and they were playing Molly That's Hatchet. where you hear it. But it just like was in my mind and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to listen to Flirting with Disaster. Hell yeah, you are. So I put on the headphones, pull it up on YouTube. It's got that artwork. I'm already like, fuck, fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. And it starts, and I don't know if you remember this, about Flirting with Disaster. Okay. But it starts like a progressive rock, 70s progressive it rock song. It sounds like Rush all, almost. For 26 seconds, it Ba-da-da-da. sounds like you're, you're about Ba-da-da-da. to like. Yeah. And then in slides, uh, what I can only assume is a monster in clown makeup who's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. It sounds like a big redneck Kermit the Frog. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know? Anyway, so like my mind remembered that voice. But it didn't remember the opening, so my brain was... I don't know what it was. It just, like... Took you somewhere. It severed some connection in my head and, like, reapplied new connections. Wow. And immediately, I started seeing this... You had a vision. I had a vision. Just like Doc Brown falling and hitting his head on a toilet and envisioning the flux capacitor. Wow. I had a vision of... Okay. Was it the spirit of Dale Earnhardt give this to you? I think I, it was. I, maybe it was. Raise maybe hail, was. praise Dale. <laughs> it's called Meth House Massacre. Meth House. Meth House Massacre. Massacre. I it, am on deck. It is. It's grindhouse exploitation. Okay. Five minutes short. Five minutes. That is a shorty short. Five minutes short. That could nearly be a music video. Only for slightly disaster. longer than the actual song because the beginning is our protagonist Ben in vision. Okay, I'm I'm leaning back in my chair right now. I'm closing my eyes. Yeah, I'm envisioning Southern man. He's been roofing thirty years of his life. So now he's yes. forty six. He's lived a hard life. Yeah, yes. forty six looks sixty. Mm, yes, leathery, very tan, leathery. Mm, mm. Um, <laughs> name's probably Robert or something. Okay. Something something simple. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a blue collar yeah. man. He walks out to his Trans Am. Slides into the tape deck. What color is the Trans Am? 
Is it, uh, is it black or Primer with, gray. Uh, oh, yes. It's perfect, beat the shit. Perfect. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, slides the Molly Hatchet tape in. Oh, uh, yes. That's right where we're mov- our movie starts is him sliding that in. I love it. We get a shot of him with a Marlboro Red in the rear view adjusting in the mirror. Garage door goes up. See the Trans Am back out. Oh, Off yeah. Off he goes. He's driving. We got, got some... Got the T-tops down. T-tops fucking down. Yeah. He's, well, I'm, the I'm one a... that he could get down. The other one... It's yeah, stuck. it's kind of stuck. Can't get that one. Yeah, I'm imagining a, a dream catcher hanging from the oh, rearview yeah. mirror, blowing in the wind. Yeah, yes, catching his dreams. And of course, he's wearing aviator sunglasses. Yes, he's wearing aviators, and yeah. he's wearing well, one of those uh, like one of those uh, jean jackets. I have the wool collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I've I've got him. Yeah, I've got like him this. in my mind. This is that guy. I'm imagining maybe even yeah. like a like a, a Miller High Life in a koozie. Oh his yeah, legs. he's got something in a koozie yeah. for sure. Yeah, he's a koozie kind of guy. Milwaukee's best, maybe. He knows how to keep a beer cold. He does. He does. Cold beer cold. That's how he likes Where's it. Where's he going? So he's driving, driving down the road. We get about a minute into the song. He pulls up to a trailer, <laughs> pulls into the gravel driveway. Of course, uh, it crunches underneath his yeah. majestic tires. Music goes down a little bit. Ooh yeah. We see him sneaking around, looking in the window. Okay, he's on to something. He's on a mission. He gets up to the door, yeah. pulls out a gun with a silencer on it. Okay, yes. Kicks in the door Boom. right as the the guitar solo starts. Then slow motion, yes. he's going to slaughter everybody in this trailer. <laughs> but So there's a lot of people in this trailer. There's, all right. What are they up to? There are two people sitting on sofas yeah. watching TV. Bam, bam. What there's do they guy- do? We don't, we we don't, don't get know to yet. that yet. Hold on. Uh, there's a guy standing at uh, the uh, refrigerator in the kitchen to the left. Yeah. Holding up milk, drinking out of the carton. He turns toward him. Shot through the bottom of the milk. <laughs> yeah. Milk explodes. Milk blood and everywhere. blood and just pink foam all turns across the kitchen. Turns to the right down a very narrow hallway. Yes. Out comes a guy from the bathroom off to the left. He's got he's got on like a, a gas mask and like one of those rubber things and rubber oh, gloves okay. and a fucking machete. He's got his like hazmat suit on. Because he's been cooking meth. He's been cooking the meth. And got we it. get a machete gunfight in a narrow little hallway. I want it to be John Wick style. I'm very on board with this. Some, <laughs> he fuck- some gun play he wins that one right next to him there's a door he kicks that in there's somebody fucking the shit out of somebody else yeah stabs them both with the machete right through both of friday them. friday the 13th style yeah, yeah i like this yeah. very much okay all right then he kicks in that next door yeah there's a woman there with a kid oh no he pulls a sack of money out of his pocket throws it at her says there's your spouse or support Oh my Grabs god. Grabs a boy and says, out to the car. That was his kid. Takes him to the car, goes back in. I got one more thing to do. Walks to the master bedroom. Yeah. Kicks in the door. There's three uh. people cooking up meth. Yeah. Lights up a Molotov cocktail. I like this. One guy says, You gonna kill us all? And he says, Exactly. That's the boom. <laughs> Walks away. Oh my it's God. burning. Boom! Big Giant explosion. explosion. He doesn't react. He he doesn't react. He gets in the car. We're we're riding or whatever. He says something to the boy. Yeah. And then bop 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 bop. And then fucking they're done. Oh my God. The end. That's a ten out of ten if I've ever heard one. This is a dynamite. Script. I want to film this. This is amazing. There's not much to it. No. Uh. Uh-uh. No. It's like a- and it's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple and just as it should be. We get the story right. There's like like yeah. three lines, but we get the stories. Wife has his kid in a meth trailer. He yeah. kills all the meth people, takes his kid. Yeah. But also we get to do some cool kills in a meth explosion. <laughs> Absolutely. It's also a morality tale. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Yeah, exactly right. I might want to cut that out. I wanted him to be amoral. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Well, well here, here's kind of what I was thinking, especially now that I, I know this Montauk cocktail angle. Yeah. And we were talking about him having like a beer and a koozie or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm imagining when the movie starts and we're in his home, I think he picks up the keys off of a stack of like unpaid child support letters. Yeah. He picks it up. And on his way out, he grabs a fifth of Jim Beam. Hell yeah. And we're like, oh man, this guy's a piece of shit. He doesn't pay his child support. Uh-huh. He, he drinks while he drives, just straight liquor and mm-hmm. stuff. And maybe he has a pull of it when he's Well, you got to make room there. for the rag. Exactly there right. Yeah. Go. So the whole time, we're, <laughs> and, and then we just see him killing all these people. We're like, this yeah. is the bad guy. We're following the bad guy here. And then we realize, yeah, that, that he had the whiskey with him to make the Montauk cocktail. Hell yeah. He was ultimately there just to get his kid from, yeah. his, from that kid's old deadbeat mom. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic it's story. It's fun, man. Yeah. 
It's five minutes. I mean, a you little know. over, a little over. But yeah, it ha- the, to me, it's basically everything I see when I hear that song. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I see because that's like my experience of Molly Hatchet is people like that. He's flirting with disaster, dude. <laughs> and he's he flirting with is. disaster. I think about the the NASCAR game for PlayStation One whenever I hear that song because whenever you started <laughs> the game up, yeah, whenever you started the game up, the intro video had flirting with disaster. <laughs> So I watched it very, very, very many times. So here's what I want to do, Ben. Okay. I'm going to steal Robert Rodriguez's ideas. You know, uh, RR there. All right. I'm going to call him RR. Double R. He does a thing that has been termed the Rodriguez list, mm. where he lists things that he has access to that are cool. Oh, okay. That he can use that in he a can movie. Use. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. hearing about this on one of those. Um, it might have been on... Maybe the Desperado, like, 10-minute film school right. thing on the DVD. Yeah. All right. So, what I want to do is I want to create a Rodriguez list for Meth House Massacre. <laughs> Get and this I, thing done. I want to ask our our fans. Yeah. If, they, if you want to be involved and you have you have something cool. You, a if a you, Trans Am. If, yeah. If you got a shitty old Trans Am we can use, you got a, a trailer we can burn to the ground. Hazmat suit. <laughs> you got hazmat suit. You got anything that sounds like it would be fit and yeah. be cool in this, and you're willing to let me use this for what is very much going to be a, a zero-budget attempt video at making sensation. this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me know. And we will figure out how we can use it. I love it. Because I, I really think, like, this is not only super simple, would take three, four days probably shooting. Yeah. Mostly with the makeup effects and squibs would be issues. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know if we could afford squibs. Oh, we can do that fix so digital. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I know, but it's not yeah, as cool. It's not the same. You want this squibs. Yeah, because, I like, that's the thing, though. I, 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 I can't do it if it's going to be digital. I, I can't. The, the explosion can't be digital. Right. It, has it to be can real. be. Yeah, yeah. It has to be real because it's exploitation. If it's a digital and exploitation, you've like ruined it. You sold out. Yeah. It's like throwing a synthesizer in like in the middle of a country song. Like <laughs> people would be like, what the fuck is this? I was listening to Merle and I started getting synthesized. I felt like a damn robot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know of anything, uh, if you, if you uh, have any idea or if honestly, it's it's gonna require people to get shot at, yeah, it's or true. whatever. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, let me know. We'll figure this out because I think I'm we sold. can get it shot pretty quickly, yeah. real easily. Um, I know a guy who does you know soundtrack work and stuff like that. I know too. that guy too. I happen to know a guy. Yeah, because we're not gonna be able to afford flirting with disaster I was, we'll just know that flirting with disaster is what this is <laughs> well you know i was gonna say i could painstakingly re-record it and put my own when i'm traveling down the road <laughs> vocal on there i would love to would i would awesome. love to and then how about during the closing credits uh-huh. there's a ukulele cover sung by zoe de chanel oh yeah more bubble voice yeah exactly just bubble voice <laughs> all over the fucking think, place okay so like <laughs> like when he started singing like that yeah that's that, the sound like everybody was it was like it sounded like rush yeah for 26 for seconds second. they're like fucking we're we're good musicians yeah and then he's like sounds great guys sounds great i got some ideas and then i'll just come on the stage like it's like a redneck muppet <laughs> yeah that's the sound yeah and then we'll have like a big warrior with a battle axe on <laughs> the cover of our <laughs> well you know it's like let's look at stuff that's cool southern rock fucking cool rush yeah, yeah. real fucking cool muppets oh man awesome. kermit my favorite right. Frank Frazetta artwork, Vikings. <laughs> Seriously? See also my favorite. <laughs> Molly Hatchet's awesome. Yeah, that's the conclusion we're coming right to. Down. It is all fucking all. It's like 10 great tastes combined into I one. I really want to do this because like researching about Robert Rodriguez, I guess we could slide now into talking about that's the That's a good old transition yeah. right there. That guy's a master at using what he has, yes. stretching a budget, he's been fooling doing it. your eye. He's been doing it forever. Yeah. He does it even now when he ha- could have bigger budgets. Yeah, that's what blows my mind. Like, I, I got to watch a little bit of the, the making up stuff on this. Yeah. And they were showing so many scenes where it's just like, oh, yeah, there's just nothing behind that person. There's just like, uh, like some of the car scenes. Yeah. They just shot sitting in a car with a black background and uh-huh. had 
smoke being blown going uh-huh. by them and you just think it means the car is moving yeah it works visually it completely works yeah <laughs> if it works you just save not insurance because if the yeah. actor has to drive you got insurance problems yeah there's extra stuff yeah. you have to pay for there so that's I, that's what i want to do like i i had been planning for this spring to d- shoot the camp slasher i've been working on but i really like I stumbled on the script and just don't feel good about it and and then realized like it's such a big like a, a feature length thing is such yeah. a big thing to start big undertaking. with. Yeah. But this it's just uh I mean a GoPro on a car for some of the angles. Uh, yeah. You can use an iPhone for everything else if you need to. Like, yeah, really, yeah. Works fine. I think it's awesome. And we're in the South where it looks exactly how I'm picturing it. Correct. You can easily find a gravel driveway and, <laughs> and a goddamn trailer. And people that I could look just like take them, meth. I could just take them to Shea Spratling slash my mom's uh, trailer that my sister then bought from her. Oh. That my brother then bought from her. Oh, wow. Three generations. And now my, my nephew and my nieces live there. Four generations. Keeping of, it in the family. Awesome. Keeping it in the trailer. family. trailer. If those walls and could talk. And that's exactly how I designed it is the way that trailer is. So, I love it. I mean, I, I just want it to happen. I'm on board, dude. I'm yeah. way on board with that. That sounds so like a great So if any, anybody idea. wants to do that, especially people who are in like makeup effects and stuff, if you just want to show off. Yeah. For a couple days. Here's the thing is like where I did that that shoot where I was in that meth prevention commercial. Right. Which if you guys don't know about that, <laughs> Go check I'm, it out. I'm dead serious. Yeah. I was in like a statewide, state aired, uh, government sponsored commercial about <laughs> preventing um, the sale and distribution of meth. I right. was a meth cook that got busted and my fucking trailer blew up and stuff. It was so fun. So just from working on that, it's like the makeup artist that did that stuff uh, for like all the meth effects and stuff. Yeah. I still know her and obviously yeah. Ben Gibson that directed it still in touch with that guy. Yeah. We got plenty of meth related we resources. Got we got some people yeah. who have worked in this shit before. Yeah. So, so we, yeah, we've got people already that we've, our Rodriguez list is already starting. Yeah, we've really. got people who know what they're doing. Uh, my wife is taking makeup classes. Like you guys have done a ton. Like it's, it's, it's easy for us to do what we can by ourselves save as much money as possible yeah and, and and create a cool product that'll be a fun five minute short steve i like to raise a toast to such good fun yeah, ideas. i'm excited for this next one that ryan got us yeah i am too man yeah this is another one from the collection of wonderful things that he sent us uh this is the double cup purple stuff and this is from pontoon brewing as well which is from uh the great state of georgia usa this is a imperial Berliner Weiss with boysenberries. I'm bl- excited. Black currant and Concord grape. It's a 7.6 uh, Berliner Weiss. Guys, the that's intense. The the art of the can looks like um, a Lisa Frank folder updated, and yeah. there's like there's like two styrofoam cups full of like purple Kool Aid, and. It, if it tastes the way that looks, I I'm think stoked. it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, Ryan told me it'll remind us a little bit of that Lagunitas Dark Swan, uh, which is that we adore. Awesome. It's yeah. so good. So, oh, dude, Lagunitas, get at us with that Dark Swan. It looks like grape soda. Oh my god, yeah, it's purple it looks as like Dark fuck. Swan. Yeah, it's, it's more That's, red yeah, than Dark Swan. That is even more. Yeah, because like the foam on that is like Ooh. magenta colored. You know, <laughs> holy cow! I wonder what this is going to be like. I'm really excited about it. I feel like it's going to taste like the 90s. It smells very interesting. Yeah, it's it's very grapey, I guess. It smells very purple Berry. to me. It's purple. It yeah. smells very purple. I want that purple stuff. I'll get you a pull of that and see what that does to you there. I'm going to go in. It's actually it's not clear at all. It's very thick looking. Ooh. What's that do to you? Whoa. Don't even think about beer when you're drinking it. It's like a glass of like a grape berry juice. That is the grapiest yeah. beer I've ever had. That is like sour yeah. grape alcohol. That's pretty It's not really great. like it's not really champagne-y or like sparkling no. cidery like the dark It Swan actually is. reminds me more of uh, the Welch's sparkling grape. Okay, yeah. 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 That's unlike anything I've ever had. That is fucking awesome. If I could get that around here, that would be a staple. Hell yeah. You know? Because it's so refreshing and stuff, but at the same time, knowing that it's 7.6, it's like, you can party on that stuff. Oh, yeah. Get some of that purple 7. drink. 7.6? Yeah. I would not have expected No, that. not at all, man. 
That is awesome. That is awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan, oh, for yeah. sending us some amazing beers. I've enjoyed both of these very, very much. And there's more to come, too. There's a couple in there that he threw in that I'm Is this one you think really that, that Kate would like? Because she did like the Dark Swan. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, honestly. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Because she, she likes the more tart stuff like that, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that she would enjoy. I think she'd enjoy a double cup purple stuff. Mm-hmm. So good. Thanks again so yeah, much, I'm Ryan. That. That's that. refreshing. Yeah, it is. Right. Wow. It's really good. Now, Steve, I assume this was not the first time that you've seen Planet Terror. Uh, no, it wasn't. Um, you know, Grindhouse came out with uh, way back in the 2007 day, two thousand seven or two thousand seven. I think. Yeah. 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 I saw. I didn't go see them in the theater oh, at I did. the time. It was, that, dude. It was so fun seeing this I in bet. the theater. That would be real fun, especially yeah. with like the intercut, like uh-huh. fake. Uh, yeah, we didn't know that there were like the fake trailers and stuff in there too. Yeah. So whenever we saw it, we saw it with a bunch of friends and stuff, and it was just like, what the fuck are we watching? You know, because <laughs> like, you know, guys in Tarantino and Rodriguez uh, age group, they probably went to a couple double features and yeah. drive-ins. Yeah, they're and a little bit like older that. than us. They're probably like 10, 15 years older than us. I would yeah, say. I think so. Yeah, yeah. and. So yeah, drive-ins and we never got to experience stuff. that. Yeah, that stuff was gone by the time yeah. we came around. And I know that this is obviously just an imitation of those kinds of things, and I'm sure it had a much bigger budget than any grindhouse, real grindhouse movie ever did. But it was just fun. It was yes. just really fun. Yeah, and they both are like both Planet Terror and Death Proof were both very fun. Yeah, enjoyable, well done. But yeah, this one I like Death Proof better. I think I can just say clearly. But this is a great fucking movie. I love it. It's (laughs) honestly hard for me to say which one I like better. Like, whenever we saw it in the theater, I went in being really excited for Death Proof because, like, that's not too long after, like, Kill Bill and all that came out. And so that's right when I was really getting, like, really into Tarantino stuff. So I was super stoked about Death Proof. Uh, Went in, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe they rolled Planet Terror first. I think so, yeah. And uh, I was like, holy shit, that was amazing. I can't wait for the Tarantino one. So... They rolled Planet Terror, and it was absolutely awesome, and I loved it. And it made me even more excited for the Tarantino one. Uh-huh. And I found it the first time around. I found Death Proof to be like kind of boring. I was like, huh. "There's just a bunch of talking in this," and I didn't there really get into it. was a bunch of talking. It. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But then, like on subsequent viewings, I just been like, "Oh my god, there's yeah. so much talking it's in this. Just, I love it. It's so perfect." Yeah, we yeah. watched it again the other night. It's great. You know, it's like, well, we were mm-hmm. watching Planet Terror. It's like, yeah, well let's yeah. yeah, just let it roll. So we watched Death Proof as well. And it's so fucking good. I have a hard time saying which one I like more, yeah. honestly, because I love I think, Planet Terror. Yeah, I think Planet Terror, they're, they're not even comparable, honestly. They're just completely no. different types of movies. There's a zombie movie versus a, like, a... Car exploitation. Car exploitation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a chase movie. Yeah. But honestly, there's really only, like, one chase. Yeah, there's it. not a ton of... Like, a, there's a lot of talking. Yeah. There's a lot of setup that lets us know, but, yeah. like, it builds that tension. There's really only two action beats. Yeah, you know the, the first one time. that begins the yeah. movie, and then yeah, the one that ends it. The one at the very end, and that's yeah. it. But dude, Kurt Russell in there is just <laughs> so good. So we'll we'll review that on its oh, yeah. own Death eventually Proof, sometime Death too. I could gush about yeah. it for for forever. But we should just have a Kurt Russell month. <laughs> yeah, I like that man, Kurt Vimber. Kurt Vimber. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Planet Terror. I loved the minute that I saw it because it's just so ridiculous and yeah. fun and, and fast. it owns it from the yeah. moment it starts it owns how ridiculous it is but they play it straight yeah now that, that's actually what i was envisioning with meth house massacre okay which i'll go back to it, I, it was from this it was from the fake trailers and from this it was just like the idea of exploitation like people have forgotten that uh including very obvious meta joke in your your horror movie that's not clever Mm-hmm. Like being like, what is this Friday the Thirteenth? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But like, b- being earnest and serious when it's absolutely ridiculous is hilarious. Yeah, definitely. It's so much funnier. Like, because there are funny lines and intentionally funny lines in this, but so many of the funny lines are really just like, this is so crazy. This is insane. This is ridiculous. This yeah. would never happen. It's so fun to just be like. There's so much back and forth. Anytime Cherry's talking to anybody, there's just so much oh, back yeah, and forth, totally. like so much wordplay. Yeah. And it's just real fun to watch. Plus, the funny thing is, you know, we spent some of that like Frontiers episode and other episodes like Saw and stuff like that, like complaining about how when you're watching those, it's reminding you that it's a movie. There's yes. use of like shitty color and uh-huh. filters and stuff like that. But with this movie, you're like, 
cool. It's I'm watching a movie. Yeah, you this know? movie is, it, 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 like relishes in the fact that it's a movie. Like it gives yeah. us the film damage and stuff, constantly reminding you this is a movie, so you can really dig it. Yeah, exactly. You can't get engrossed in like the realities of of because this story is very complicated and it's missing a twenty minute reel. Yeah, on Lord purpose. God knows like, what happens. like. This movie wouldn't work as a serious movie. No. If they were really presenting this, like, this is the next zombie movie. But when you're saying, like, it's an exploitation movie and you're supposed to be having fun, just remember, it's a movie. The like, crappiness is part of the charm. Yeah. You know? It's like your favorite fucking shitty bar that just serves uh-huh. PBR and Coors and, like, food on paper plates. But it's like, that's why I like <laughs> it's it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. That's why I like to come here because that is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's always that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's simultaneously super gross and super funny at the same uh-huh. time. And it's the kind of gross that, like, makes you laugh at how gross yeah, it is. Yeah, like, over-the-top crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the abscess tongue, the yeah. dick swollen oh, from dude, Iraq. When like, the doctor is just scrolling through those pictures. Yeah. And it's like, why are you showing me this? Because it's gross. And they're real. Yeah. Those are real medical uh-huh. photos, yep. which is just so disgusting yep. to know. It Life really can be is. really bad sometimes, apparently. It really can be. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, if there, like, is there a sign, like, you obviously know to have safe sex and not to just be sticking your genitalia wherever, uh-huh. but, like, how, how, how would you get the STD that that person had? Like, the person you had sex with had to have, it, there had to be some indication, right? I should imagine that wasn't an unseen killer. Right. That guy's dick looked like a baked potato. Right. Yeah. It did. It looked like a, a burnt baked potato. Yeah. God, it's gross. It oh, was not God. good, man. It was Ooh. not good. Oh. But just the way that this movie just relishes in being yeah. just being gross. gross. Like we've got our um the one doctor that's played by Josh Brolin, uh-huh. Doctor Bill. Yeah. And um, he's clearly like a germaphobe. Which first of all, it's uh-huh. kind of funny. It's like the idea of a doctor. Who's a germaphobe? Uh-huh. That's constantly got this like thermometer in his mouth, and yep. he's wearing rubber gloves all the time, and all this, checking his heart rate all the time. I love those character tics. Yeah. But then you know this first like zombie guy that he encounters that's infected, he like pops that abscess tongue, uh, and yeah. it just like splatters all over his face. Yeah. And then later that same guy like pops a bunch of his own blisters and on his face, spreads and them on rubs his face, it on him. Ugh. It's just so nasty, gross. Yeah. It's, it's so perfect. good, man. It's so good. Yeah, I like the I like the the use of gore and stuff in this because yeah. for one, it's it's basically all practical, almost all practical. The the some slight computer like effects afterwards, like some oh, of that, definitely some green screen. Yeah, yeah, some of that scratching is is actually digital too. Like they right. obviously they did some uh, didn't they like just drag the film behind a motorcycle? Oh, or really? Something? Yeah, they just drag the reels behind a motorcycle for a little bit but then they also added some like digital pops and stuff but also uh uh cherry's leg rose mcgowan's leg right is, uh i mean she's she's wearing a cast to keep it straight so like she the way she's walking is exactly how she would be walking but that's actually cg i was wondering about that because i was i was watching that and you know obviously thinking well they must have had like a big green sock on her leg or something like right. that but i was like but she really is doing the hobbling yeah. and awkward walking yeah, they just very put a well stiff cast on so she couldn't she couldn't bend it at all that's awesome yeah and dude just the utter silliness of she's a go-go dancer uh-huh. and she's like who wants to be a stand-up comedian yeah even though she doesn't think she's funny yeah <laughs> And then she loses her leg, so she can't even stand up anymore. Yeah, it's like such a funny It's joke. just cruel irony. It's awesome. And then the notion that, you know, Ray just, like, jams a table leg. Yeah. And, he's, and he, I love how he's instantly just, like, fucking get over it. He's like, get up and walk. Yeah. Like, he just does not deal that with Ray. any shit Man. from anybody. He's awesome, dude. He is. He's great. And then later, he assembles a fucking machine gun leg for her. Yes, he does. And the notion that she would suddenly know how to like operate this thing yeah and just mow zombies down and like how's the trigger being pulled on that fucking thing <laughs> it just is doesn't matter it just is yeah and that's the thing <laughs> about it right is like the way that this movie presents itself it's, it doesn't you don't question matter it. why would you question yeah, it yeah later she shoots a rocket out of yeah it. of course she does cause why not <laughs> you know cause it's fucking awesome it's that's just, why he attached a knife to it as well oh yeah why? there's a bayonet on there why 
<laughs> it's so awesome, man. Yeah, Cherry's kind of the central character in this flick. And uh, another cool thing about Rose McGowan playing her part and stuff is she did basically all of her own stunts. She, she had a stunt did. lady, but like all those yeah. scenes of her like flying through the air and shit, mm. that's her on a wire. They did we that should, old school. We should talk about uh, uh, Rose McGowan being in this movie because it's a big deal. This is after Harvey Weinstein sexually assaulted her and blacklisted Ooh. her from... Oh, this is after that. Yes. And this is a Weinstein Company film. Which, let's just go ahead and put out our usual dead and lovely. Yeah, fuck, fuck Harvey Weinstein. Fuck Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> fuck that guy. Yeah, again, like we said before, it's it's just sucks that there's so many great movies with the name Weinstein yeah. in front of them. So you have well, to watch this movie and go, At least we can always fall guy. back on Bob, I guess. I don't know. Um, but basically what happened was... Harvey Weinstein, if you don't know already about Rose McGowan, Rose McGowan was sexually assaulted by Harvey Weinstein, um, and he basically blacklisted her and tried to get her blacklisted from Hollywood completely. Uh, so if you remember, like in the mid-2000s, Rose McGowan was in tons of stuff, and then you're yeah. like, where'd Rose McGowan go? Yeah. That's where she went. That's where she Cause went. Because he had the power to do that. Uh, Robert Rodriguez was dating Rose McGowan at the time and knew about this and insisted on casting her to say, fuck you to really? Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Because this was Bob Weinstein's dimension label, and he knew Bob Weinstein would would defend him. So no shit, he did it basically um, one because he wanted Rose McGowan to do it. Yeah, but he thought she'd be perfect for the part. But he also was doing it as like a fuck you to Harvey Weinstein. Like you you don't have all the power. I, I wonder. I was wondering too if that's why. Quentin Tarantino, the would-be rapist, <laughs> his, like, fucking dick falls off and melts and he gets killed. Well, yes, okay, so that's... Okay, so um, Robert Rodriguez did this, um, and Rose McGowan has since said that, like, she felt like she was being exploited in that scene, and Ro- Robert Rodriguez, I thought, of course, thought he was letting her get revenge, basically, yeah. letting her play out her revenge, which... Uh, just, I think, serves as a reminder for any male creatives trying to write sexual assault or film sexual assault. Like, mm-hmm. you probably just don't want to do it. Like, yeah. you probably, like, I understand your good intentions. Like, he had good intentions. He thought he was helping his girlfriend work through this terrible thing that happened to her. But she felt exploited by it. Yeah, those are, those are shoes that you just can't claim to have walked in. Yeah, yeah, you know? I mean... Uh, I mean, some have some uh, definitely there are men out there have been sexually assaulted and they could write about that experience. Uh, But yeah, it's probably just best for men to not wade into those territories without really consulting with people who've experienced. I mean, he could talk specifically to his girlfriend here. Maybe and that. be like, what would you want to happen? Right, yeah. But that would be a good first step. Yeah, I think but I, I think still good intentions. He he did intended for her to get some sort of catharsis from it. And as I said in Dust Till Dawn, I love seeing a scummy pervy Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. He does it so fucking well. <laughs> he, well, yeah, too well, <laughs> too a well, too maybe. well, probably. Yeah. yeah, a little too well. But anyway, this is interesting though because Harvey Weinstein, of course, got his revenge. By uh, slashing the advertising budget for Grindhouse, which is why it didn't make money. No shit. Yep. Really? Yep. That's how that happened. That's how petty he is. Fuck that. He'd rather piece lose of shit. money than let Rose McGowan have a role. That is insanely yeah. and fucking so, petty and yeah, stupid. All of those people out there that, uh, whenever Rose McGowan came out and were like, why didn't you say something sooner, etc.? This is why. Because he had her career in his hands. Yeah. Hollywood's not McDonald's. You don't just go down the street to fucking Burger King. Yeah, and get like another job doing the same thing. What is the thing? Burger King of Hollywood? Right. New York City? New York City is the Burger King of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to do any better there. Because right. Harvey Weinstein also has pull there. So, yeah, it, like, it, people need to understand what how predatory and terrible all this stuff that was going on during the big Me Too push and recognize that, like, because a lot of people started attacking Rose McGowan based off of like other things she had done, like she dated Marilyn Manson, and well, no, no, like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, maybe that. Um, like she worked on a Victor Salva film, and Ooh, uh, really, she she said in an interview, like I don't know about all that, and I don't really want to know about it. And it's like mm, it's kind of putting your head in the sand. That was 2011. I would say now she probably feels differently, but. Um, but she, yeah, she's also had some problems with uh, things she said 
not negative. I would say not negative about the LGBT community, but specifically she has called out homosexual men for their continued uh, misogyny. Oh, really? Yeah, because just because you're a homosexual man doesn't mean that you're nice to women. Like, we all make this sort of leap and assumption, and she just basically made these statements saying, like, well, I, from my experience, that's not true. I've experienced just as much misogyny from some of the people I've worked with in the industry who've been gay as some of the people who have worked with who've been straight. So, okay. Um, and that kind of got her in some hot water. And, and basically, like, people were bringing all this stuff up during the Me Too thing, and it's it really got me thinking, like, because we talked about this with, um, what's the one with Meg? Jennifer's body. Jennifer's body. Just like we talked about with, with her. Like, she said that she felt like she couldn't come out about her sexual assault claims because people automatically hate her and she thought it would hurt the movement. In a lot of ways, Rose McGowan dealt with that. of People hating her because of other things she'd done and ignoring the fact that what she was talking about was a real and true problem. And so... I was having some struggle, like struggle with this, and then I found some. I just saw. I don't even know what it was about. I just saw a comment somebody said about something else, and they said the uh, there is no perfect activist, and it just hit me. I was like, yeah, that's right. Hmm. When we when somebody is active, uh, like actively working towards a goal and a cause. We always pull out all this other shit about them, mm-hmm. like just because you want something altruistic or something some sort of social justice you have to be perfect like that doesn't exist that doesn't exist you're not going to get the perfect person but they're working for the thing you you want so just accept them like really like, take them on and and recognize like yeah they're not perfect but they're working for the thing that i care about so, that's kind of more important than trying to drag every skeleton out of somebody's closet so yeah times, yeah so anyway Glad Rose McGowan was in this movie. Is what yeah, I'm no saying. doubt. Because it, it was it's a big fuck you, and it didn't really come out until Rose McGowan came out about wow. it. Because Robert Rodriguez didn't feel like he should talk about it because it wasn't his experience, right? But then he started talking about it afterwards. So he he's made it clear that yeah, it was a big fuck you to Harvey Weinstein. Damn. So that's pretty cool. That is you. extremely cool, and I love too the way that she plays the character of Cherry, where she is. I mean, she's obviously drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. But she's also not afraid to be silly in it. Yes. But also kind of like serious silly, where it's like mm-hmm. she's funny, but her character doesn't know she's being funny. Right. That because that, yeah, that is the setup of her being a stand-up co- comic. Everybody tells her she's funny. Yeah. And and uh, her ex-boyfriend says, "But you're not." And she's like, "I know. That's what I keep telling them." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they don't get it, but everybody else sees. Yeah, she's really funny. It's great, man. Mm-hmm. What do you think about our other leading dude in this Ray? L Ray. <laughs> He's great. Which I love that like the whole explanation of whoever the fuck L Ray is, yeah. we never find out. Yeah, because it, it's it in happened the missing reel, probably I guess. Probably in the missing reel, yeah. Which PS, you know, the funny thing about that that missing reel, it starts just as there's going to be this like, you know, hot sex, sex scene yeah. between Rose McGowan and L Ray there. And uh that's kind of going off of that popular thing that, you know, I think was popularized in Fight Club that a lot of times these film projectors and stuff would snip out the nudie parts of movies to create their own reels. Of, right. You know, uh, uh, like smut films and stuff like but that. But in this case, they just took the whole reel. They just took it out. Yeah. And the cool thing that I found out, too, and again, this this just goes back to, like, Rodriguez being amazing at working with nothing. Yeah. So we get a little bit of that sex scene, right? Where they're like undressing and writhing around and rolling around and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Those two actors were never in the same room together. <laughs> That's great. It's crazy when it's you awesome. watch it. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, you think of it and in your memory, it's like, Oh, it was, it was getting hot in there and stuff. Yeah. But now it was just cutting back and forth yeah. between them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was never any, they were never in the room together, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. But yeah, apparently El Rey is some like legendary figure. Yeah. But one thing that they pointed out um, on the director commentary with Robert Rodriguez, which I would totally recommend watching and listening to sometime. It's really, really fantastic. Uh, again, I, I, I'll maintain. He just seems like a cool fucking he guy. He does. Seems like a real cool guy. He was talking about how, you know, I think it's, uh, is it Freddy Rodriguez that plays him? I think uh-huh, that's his name. Yeah. He's a little no dude. No relation. Nah, no yeah. relation. He's a short guy. Oh, okay. He's like five foot nothing. He's a, he's a small dude. And you can really tell that at the first of the movie whenever he pulls up in that great big tow truck. And the truck is like huge. It's like a damn Jeepers Creepers truck. And then he's got to hop down. Yeah, he hops out of it. He's like, he doesn't even reach the door handle. He's yeah. like a little guy. 
But the cool thing is, is the way that they shot the movie, and again, this was all like deliberate, they started off with a lot of shots of him showing you how small he is. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the movie, they start doing all the shots like upward at him and stuff. Right. So, so he's, now he's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Like as the movie goes on. Because he starts out, we don't know he's a hero. We yeah. don't know anything about it. He's mysterious. Yeah. yeah. And he becomes like this larger than life hero, even in the eye of the camera. Right. Which I think is just really cool. It's one of those like subtle things that you don't really notice. But it's real think smart, back yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. He really, really does seem to like just grow larger as the movie goes. I like that he is the secondary hero of this movie, though. Yeah. The protagonist and hero is Cherry. Yeah. She ends up being the one who just makes, she saves it all and saves civilization right. in Tulum, Mexico. So, like, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's, it's a bit different than you would expect, maybe, from an exploitation movie. Yeah. To have these strong female characters, and it's not only her. Well, sometimes they would do that in some of those old yeah. flicks. I mean, some yeah, that- flicks and stuff. She beat a ass. <laughs> I mean, there were yeah. obviously a lot of like exploitation yeah. things that were not cool back well, then. Well, yeah, like but. the uh, the black exploitation films and the like the prison exploitation yeah. films. Those were often about badass women. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Yeah. And we've got another badass woman here in old Dakota, Doctor Dakota. Yeah, played by Marley. Blah blah blah. Yeah, when you when you peppercorn. Yeah, that's her name. Uh-huh. That's what she's known as. Yeah, and she's awesome. She's one of those faces where I'm always like, I know her from something. And Marley then I, Shelton. Marley Shelton? Yeah. Okay. And I can never remember like what you I know, know her from. You know her from a ton of things, She's I'm in sure. a ton of stuff. Yeah. You yeah. also you know her from Sin City, probably, yeah, uh-huh. where she plays a customer at the beginning. Um, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She is in there. Uh-huh. And I love her character. She's got her three friends. And she has that whole speech about like it's what they great. do. It's so cheesy and like It's dumb. super cheesy, but like it's perfect. It's like Tarantino type of uh, character yeah. where you're down for it. You're down for the cheese. But that's the thing about it too is even though she's got this whole cheesy thing about her three friends, her character delivers it like so seriously. Like yeah. after the third one, you won't remember a thing. Uh-huh. And it's like overacting. But you'll never see way. me again. Yeah. After the oh, third one, is. you'll never see me yeah. again. Mm-hmm. But then she also has like the pistol thing that like shoots them for some yes. reason. It's like like, so badass. Okay. She's loading that up and she's got a little like thigh holster thing. Yeah. So cool. So here's something funny that apparently happened while they were filming it. So you know there's the scene where um, well she encounters you know basically patient zero for the movie mm-hmm. there and she's giving him the three injections. So they were supposed to have stage needles. You know that oh, like no. collapse whenever you, you yeah. push them onto somebody's skin. Apparently they didn't. Yeah those were the actual real ones that she was holding. Oh, shit. Yeah. And so as they were filming that scene, she fucking stabbed that guy and apparently hit Vane like three times. Like oh, amazing shit. aim. But hit him three times in a row. Way to go her. Yeah. While they were shooting that. And then after the shot, you know, dude was like, man, those really hurt. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? And they checked it. It's like they weren't the prop needles. So when you see that in the movie, that's actually him getting poked with real needles, which is pretty funny. <laughs> that is funny. But then the cool thing is, is they had a medic on hand because the guy that we mentioned earlier that was like showing the disgusting medical pictures. Yeah. That's Robert Rodriguez's real doctor. Not an actor. Not an actor. Yeah. No. Like he, he was talking to his doctor and his doctor was telling him about all the like gross stuff he saw while he was in Iraq because he did like a tour as a medic in Iraq. Uh-huh. And Rodriguez just got the idea is like, you're the only one that can tell this stuff. Like, so come, yeah, be, just, on my just movie. come be in the movie. And Again, then he, the Rodriguez list. Yeah, I got this doctor. I, I got He's got a, a doctor. cool story. Exactly, yeah. dude. Exactly. So he had this doctor guy come in uh, and, and thankfully he was there to make sure that she didn't, you know, fuck this guy's veins up or something. <laughs> Apparently she didn't. Way to go, honestly. Way to go. Yeah. And she's having an affair. Yes. On with Dr. Fergie. Bill. With it's old hot. Fergalicious, man. Yeah. Fergalicious. And I like how they... They kind of like subtly play with her being a lesbian in the movie. Like when she hops on the bike with Cherry, and she's like, I'm Cherry. And she's like, yeah, you sure? are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> uh-huh. I like that. It's That's so cool. Good. Like, it's cool to like, you don't get that enough with lesbian characters where you just get somebody who's lascivious. Mm-hmm. Just like, well, fuck. Yeah, you are. Like you get that with gay characters. You get that with straight true, characters. Yeah. Not enough lesbian characters get to be like. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about up? that. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't really thought about that. Mm-hmm. I love whenever she... You know, she gets stabbed in the hand by her husband, Bill. Brutal. God, that that freaked me out. Because I don't know why. Like, I don't like needles. I don't like them in my veins. But seeing a needle go in a hand, for some reason, was like, like, as a weapon. Why? Like, stabbing like it was a knife or something. Yeah. Oh, God. 
It's brutal. Uh-huh. And then, like, she's trying to open the car door uh-huh. and, like, breaks her wrist that is, and stuff. That's such good acting. She great. did that so great. And yeah. It's, it's per- and then later when, like, she just, like, sets it by, like, squeezing yeah. her fist. Yeah. It's like, that's not <laughs> how that fucking works. It's Come so on. Cool. But it's so good, dude. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, she's amazing in this. And, uh, of course, they have their son, Tony. Who, Tony, who's uh, Robert Rodriguez's son. Yeah, yeah, his real kid. And I swear, dude, he has to be an homage to little Danny Torrance. Yeah, there are tons of homages in this. Like, he's definitely, yeah, he's he's definitely an homage to Danny. He's got, like, sort of the same haircut and stuff. And, yeah, like, and wears, yeah. like, a lot of the same clothes. And kind of talks adult like Danny. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, I, dude, I love that our introduction to him is him playing with those toys. And he's like, I'm going to eat your brains and get your knowledge. Yeah. I love that fucking shit, I wonder dude. if that was an improv or, like, that's just how he know. played. Like, that would be funny. And, dude, the way that he has to go back and he's like, my scorpion, my tarantula, uh-huh. no, my turtle. My turtle. <laughs> <laughs> he has to go back for all these fucking pets, <laughs> which is so funny. And then, dude... I about died the first time that I saw this, and she leaves him in the car with the gun. Yeah. And is like, you know, don't open the door for anybody. What if it's daddy? Especially if it's daddy. Uh Uh-huh. She shuts the door, walks like three steps. Kid blows himself away. (laughs) And it shows it. It shows a dead kid with a a bullet hole in his head. Yeah. You don't see that much. It was just one of those things where it's like, that was so highly unnecessary yeah, to even have that happen mm-hmm. and just so dumb. Uh-huh. I loved it. I thought it was so <laughs> fucking funny, man. It's great. Yeah. And of course, her, her dad is the amazing Earl McGraw. Yeah, Michael Parks. Played by Michael R. Parks. R.I.P., yep. man. Michael Parks, absolutely awesome. We've talked about him in our Tusk episode, our yeah. Dust Till Dawn episode. Where he played the same character. Uh-huh. If we ever did a Kill Bill, we'd find the same character The same in there. character. Or in uh, Death Proof, he also plays yeah. the same character. Now, Ben, how can that be? I don't know what the timeline is the here. Because the first movie that he's in is from Dust Till Dawn, and he gets killed in it. That's right. He dies in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that would indicate to us that From Dust Till Dawn happens after all those other movies. <laughs> I'm not sure of the timeline there. Because, like, it also, his son, Edgar, who is played by his real life son. Son number one. Yeah. His son, Edgar, is in uh, From Dust Till Dawn 2. He's in oh, uh, yeah. Death Proof and uh, he's not in Planet Terror, but he's in Death Proof and Kill Bill. They're, they're obviously setting up that these. People are all like this all is the same all universe. part of the same universe. Yeah. So that means from Dust Till Dawn is is after these movies. Earl That's seen some shit. Earl's seen some fucking Earl has shit. Seen some yeah. shit, dude. It's crazy. It is. That's that's totally awesome. That those mm-hmm. all kind of cross over. And there's yeah. definitely uh, crossovers between Death Proof and Planet Terror. There's oh yeah. There's a mention of Jungle Julia uh-huh. in Planet Terror. Yeah. Um, there's also another like Tarantino crossover there. She's got. Uh, Nurse Dakota has like a to-do list, and the last thing on there is Kill Bill, which of <laughs> which course is, is referencing yeah, jo- uh, yeah Josh, Josh Brolin, Brolin. <laughs> but still, it's Kill Bill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tarantino tie-in right there. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see how all those worlds are kind of interconnected, and just even imagine what the timeline could possibly be. How the world works, because like there are vampires down in Mexico, and there's uh, uh, like zombie soldiers. <laughs> Wherever this is, like, this yeah. is a crazy world. So crazy, Ben, that you had an interesting theory that your wife vehemently disagreed Man, with. Man, no. I know I'm right. I think you're I right, too. Right. I think you're right, too. But this is it involves Bruce Willis's character. Bruce Willis is in this movie. Yep. He's talking about how he and his, his guys yeah. killed Bin Laden. They're the ones that shut down Bin Laden. That's what they say. Shut down Bin Laden. They were over there in the Middle East. They were in the shit. Uh Uh-huh. And he mentions that they're the ones that took him down. Uh Uh-huh. And um, I think it's... Is it is it Ray he's talking to? I can't remember, but whoever he's talking to uh, is like... He's talking to Ray and Abby. Yeah. yeah. Saeed. Saeed from from Lost. Lost, yeah. Two lost people in this. Jeff Fahey as well. Oh, yeah. That's Mm -hmm. right. I forgot about that. Yeah, he's talking to him, and he's like, you're the one that took out Bin Laden. And uh, Bruce Willis's character says something like, I gave him one in his heart, and then one in his computer. Now, Kate said, and I get it, that he's going for slang for the brain, because he does point at the head. I think he's saying Bin Laden was a fucking robot. In the world... 
That fucking makes sense. It makes sense, sense dude. That makes sense. There are zombie soldiers in this world, and apparently vampires in a brothel in Mexico, and like and a terrorist robot. A terrorist, a terrorist ro- robot. I want to see that movie. That's the movie I fucking want to see, man. If Robert Rodriguez were to make Osama Bot. <laughs> Uh, Osama Bot I oh holy shit <laughs> trademark dead and lovely Osama Bot Laden oh my god dude <laughs> get Bruce Willis in like bring him back with his zombie soldier crew and do you think they instead t- of being like a, a T-1000 he'd be a T-911 <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course he would of course he would I love it dude <laughs> God, that's fucking awesome. Yes, I want to see that. I mean, yeah. if, if you think about it, like, with the movie, like, um, oh, shit, what was that one that came out? It was on Netflix. It was, like, half an hour long. Guy travels through time, fights Hitler. Oh, right. The one that has Yorma Tacone. It's by the guy who did... What is that You know called? the movie I'm talking about. Yes. That's going to drive me crazy. But, you know, in, in that movie, it's like Hitler comes back, and he's, like, a kung fu master and all uh-huh. that shit. In a world where that can happen, we can have... An Osama Bot Laden movie. I would I 100% can't, confident. I can't in that. imagine, seriously, that if it was announced that Robert Rodriguez was doing a, a a world in the planet terror from Dust Till Dawn universe that was about robot Osama bin Laden, how would that not make at least its its budget back? Absolutely. Kung Fury was the movie. Kung, it just hit me. Fury. Kung Fury. God damn Which is that was a funny. Delight if yeah. you've never seen that movie. Go check Kung Holy Fury. Holy shit. It's so good. I think it's they're so making hilarious. it into a full length film, weren't no they? Way. Yeah. I thought I thought oh I heard God. that. I hope it looks every bit as just shitty as yeah. the original yeah. one. I hope they don't, don't change, change it at a all. thing, man. <laughs> keep the soundtrack, keep everything uh-huh. exactly as it was. Yeah, awesome. And and Bruce Willis's character in this is just a ridiculous hard ass dude. Yeah, he's Bruce Willis, basically. Yeah, just he's, his, he's his Bruce like Willis cold and things. icy demeanor and just straight to the point and hard ass, yeah. We got the guy that played Saeed from Lost. Uh-huh. He'll kind of always be Saeed Who's from like Lost. Who's like basically a war profiteer. He's a scientist who's come up with this like super toxin super gas toxin stuff. yeah and and also has figured out a cure for because the super toxin turns people into zombies but apparently if you keep spraying them with the toxin it delays it mm-hmm. so he's got these super soldiers who are just constantly being bombarded by this toxin and he loves to collect the testicles of his victims he does and that's such a weird affectation and so funny yeah but but, you know again like this movie is full of that shit yeah just tons of weird affectations Uh, yeah the josh brolin always having that thermometer in his Uh, mouth checking his pulse and then like the barbecue guy is always like working on his sauce all the time oh yeah and he like gets blood in his sauce and he's like that's it it. yeah like everybody's got their weird affectation cherry's got her her joke she's always telling and stuff that guy at the barbecue place is definitely based off of the cook in texas chainsaw massacre but it's just like if he was on a cannibal because he yeah. says so much of the same stuff and like he even has an uncomfortable nervous laugh he does a lot that's exactly or an homage to the cooks not exactly like the yeah. cooks but i i really enjoyed him and his brother played by kyle reese from the motherfucking future aka michael bain who played kyle reese in terminator oh yeah okay you're his, getting the blank look on my face i right know he's yeah. like i don't know <laughs> yeah. what awesome um, who is his brother slash the sheriff mm-hmm. and is trying to get his barbecue recipe. <laughs> Which is such a Texas is, thing. He happens to own the land where his restaurant is and keeps jacking up his rent. Yeah. Because he won't give him his barbecue recipe. And again, such awesome little side stories <laughs> yeah. between all these well, characters. Yeah, you, and like the thing is though, they don't have to spend so much time explaining no. it. We just get it from real quick sort of inner actions like, in there. Yeah, yeah, it's all pretty clear. <laughs> I love that part too, dude. What, like we were talking about Saeed and the and the balls thing. Mm-hmm. That canister gets like destroyed right away, uh-huh. and then later there's that, there's that shot where he like he gets knocked down, and like his mouth like rubs all over the balls. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Where it's just so unnecessarily stupid and gross, yeah, but so funny. Yeah, just the thought that like, well, we could just have this shot where he falls down. He's got balls in his face. Or we could do the shot, yeah, where he falls down and his mouth touches the balls. That'd be funnier. <laughs> Just so fucking great, yes. man. So fucking great. It really is. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, Fergalicious is in here. She is. She's in. She's not in it long. No. She um, gets her head fucking scooped gets out. Gets her head scooped out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she shows up. Uh, bees cute. Is mm-hmm. all like, hey, I'm 
Fergalicious. Fergalicious and, and their shots of there those obvious like boob and butt shots. shots. Yeah. yeah. Uh but, but she's yeah, good. she's she's coming to meet her girl. And uh yeah, she gets she gets taken out by these zombies that are made by the by Saeed shooting the canisters of the the toxin mm-hmm. and then we find out that she was actually coming to meet our Dakota. anesthesiologist Dakota. Yeah. Cool little interconnecting story Yeah, stuff, we you know? find that and Josh Brolin finds that out and then he pulls the old needles to the hands. That was a cool, like that really was a cool development to that story because yeah. it was like, oh where's that because she we see her texting with somebody like, you know, she's obviously leaving him and I think he knows and stuff yeah. like that in the text. And we messages. didn't even know at that point if he was a bad guy or not. Yeah. Like, she could just suck. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. Or just be unhappy, whatever. Uh, but yeah, he's an asshole. <laughs> we find out later. And then we find out that's who she was coming to meet. It, by her opening the sheet and seeing her head brainless. Yeah. Just completely yeah. hollowed out. Which is a great effect, too. Yes, that prosthetic they made of the face looks awesome i i really dug that little story and then after that yeah the story is basically just josh brolin gets turned into a zombie and keeps chasing her everywhere yep (laughs) there's a real interesting moment though with dakota where when it skips the the reel Mm -hmm. it comes back to her and she's holding her dead son and talking to him she's got the dead kid and this is 20 minutes later in the movie (laughs) So she's just been carrying right around, around her dead kid. Yeah. In the middle of like zombie apocalypse. Like what the fuck was happening in yeah. between? And what happened at the barbecue restaurants burning down? Oh yeah, it's burning down and there are like 20 people there that they we all ha- ended up there. They're all together and friends now because the, the crazy babysitters uh-huh. were like trying to, uh, they were oh, yeah, attacking they were Dakota earlier and now they're yeah. friends. No big deal. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> but it doesn't even matter. It doesn't it matter. Yeah, doesn't it doesn't fucking doesn't matter. matter. You know exactly what's happening in the film. That's more cool stuff too so the crazy babysitter twins are his actual nieces those are rodriguez's nieces oh, okay and he's like i don't know they'd be perfect in this he put them in machete too didn't he i think so yeah i think they end up in that as well if i'm not mistaken yeah and they're awesome yeah they they're do fantastic great. they do a great job i love too how they just like go nuts on dakota for no reason really yeah for i don't know what they're just crazy like, not they're, calling them to tell them that yeah she like was running an hour late, late or whatever yeah, yeah. they're like, like they're no not, fuck you we're gonna bash your car yeah, bitch. they're not infected or anything like that they're they're the crazy babysitter twins yeah. and that's literally all you need yeah. to know okay cool i'm going with it you know <laughs> and you know the dude that they end up with like there's the, oh yeah he's the strip club guy from the beginning who, yeah he's also a pilot Right. Yeah. Who looks like that guy from King of the Hill. Yes. In real life. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> that is Robert Rodriguez's realtor. This fucking what? realtor. He just put him in the movie. That's It's genius. The way yeah. this guy does this because like... Well, he said the reason he did it is because the way that he talks in the movie, he's like, that's just how he really talks. Yeah. I was going to say, because like some people, like you, you don't have to be a good actor to come off on film well. Like... Yeah. Some actors are the type of actors who get deep into characters and really work out character biography and things like that and try to understand why the character would be saying this and then how the character would say it. But then there are those actors who are just themselves. They and just, that's enough. Yeah, that's it. They show up. They are themselves. Christopher Walken. Every role. Every is role. Christopher yeah. Walken. You got you ordered Christopher Walken. You, you got, got Christopher Walken, and that's also got to make it easier for like non actors that are being drug into a movie where it's just like, yeah. well, I don't know, man. I've never, I've never acted. I'm a doctor, and it's like, I just be yourself. Yeah, just, just talk, talk like the you. way you talk. Yeah, talk about yeah. this stuff instead of what you, you usually talk about, and that's basically acting yeah. for you. It's easy. It's it's amazing that he he can pull fine performances out of like just, everybody does a good job man yeah everybody does a good job even the people who apparently are realtors and tarantino is in this on screen obviously is the 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 nasty creepy yeah uh, general dude but he's also one of the zombies that tore fergie apart apparently was he yeah and you said he was doing some directing <laughs> yeah. too yeah he was on set um and he he did some i mean because you know uh the thing about robert rodriguez is he's he's basically he does everything on his films like yeah. every single thing he can, he do, can do it to save he'll a buck, do it he'll do to it to save money yeah um and so he was doing cinematography for this film and he not the first time he'd done it but cinematography 
and directing, you need the shot set up by the time you call action. But if you're setting up the shot and then you're talking to the actors and figuring out what's going to happen, of course you're going to have, you know, some delays. Yeah. So from what I gathered from what uh, Quentin Tarantino said, basically Quentin Tarantino was on the set. He would give some direction to the people as Robert Rodriguez was setting stuff up, but the direction was stuff they had already figured out together, like they had right. already talked about. So he he didn't feel like he co-directed the movie, but he he did he, he in some ways co-directed the movie, uh, which is really cool. But they both worked together on either film, and also both worked very separately to make it their own thing. So yeah. and definitely their time spent working on Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, I'm sure it prepped them. For this yeah i imagine these guys both those can, guys are very controlling i have a vision kind of directors right which could be hard to work with when you got you know two lead cooks in the kitchen so to speak yeah but i guess they figured out that they understand each other's workflow very well exactly so that's i mean that's perfect to hear that two great directors can come together and like because that is something that on set if somebody were some other person were to give direction some directors would take that as a big fucking yeah. slight. Yeah, the fuck are you? Yeah, yeah. But but when you're the guy, this is like, oh sweet, so I can keep doing the thing I'm doing. Yeah, this is saving us time, which saves us money. Let's uh -huh. get this done. Yeah, let's let the guy that made Pulp Fiction help. Yeah, oh, the guy who made Pulp Fiction wants to tell the uh, actors what to do. Yeah, okay. cool. Yeah, cool. He wants Go to direct the shot. Please, I'll allow it. I mean, because Rodriguez did the same with Sin City. Sin City. There's yeah. a sequence that is directed by Quentin Tarantino oh, yeah. where he just it's basically the, ca the thought, car scene, right? Yeah, where he just. Basically Basically thought that. that Tarantino would do it better. So it's interesting too uh, to see how practical a lot of the stuff is, considering he just came off of doing Sin City, which is like the biggest green screen fest. Yeah, that would have been time. a lot of of extra work. Like, yeah, it's real hard to get in to headspace in a green screen. Like, right. there's some actors who do it really well. What's his name? Who plays Smeagol? Oh yeah, Andy Circus. Andy Circus. Yeah, that guy does it amazing. He can really put himself there. And be in a, a green screen room for months. Right. But it, it's real difficult. And so, yeah, that would have been a difficult shoot right off of that to this. I bet this was fun, though. Oh, it had like to the, be. This had, had to be, to be like fun. a vacation almost in some ways. For sure. How fun it would be. Oh, yeah, because the Sin City stuff had to be taken deadly serious, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> yeah, because comic book fans... They care about their. That's a books. legendary fucking yes. tome right you there. Fuck so that, you fucked that up. I mean, because you fuck up, fucked up the Watchmen. Like, yeah. Uh, people went insane about that so yeah he 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 went from a real stressful position to probably much more fun position yeah. i would say this was a blast to shoot and speaking of stuff that he did himself to save on money and everything too he did obviously the soundtrack for this as well yeah. which just reeks of a rodriguez movie which i fucking love yeah so you've got he, that main theme right the don 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 uh -huh. don that you hear through the whole movie but did you notice how there's like a million variations of that through the movie yes there's like wistful romantic piano versions of it. There's like real Spanish guitar sounding versions yeah. of it. It's always da 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 da. Uh -huh. Just that set of intervals that's just, you know, it's, it's that thing where when you have this little thread of music that mm -hmm. is woven through a movie and expressed as many different ways as you can. I mean, think about the way that John a, Carpenter does a light motif. Oh, a light motif. Yeah. I mean, Carpenter does the same thing with his mm -hmm. soundtracks, too. We'll have a million variations on one little idea, and Guess you just associate it with you, it. Love it. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. Guess who Robert Rodriguez took his inspiration and played constantly on the set? John Carpenter. John fucking Carpenter. Because yeah, okay. that's what he envisioned. He envisioned doing a Carpenter thing, and he fucking did it. He did. Yeah. It. I mean, you got to it without knowing it. That's, that's what he was awesome. doing. Yeah. That's pretty funny, man. Yeah. Interesting stuff. One of the things, too, that I really enjoy about this movie is, you know, as we've been talking about, there's multiple different kind of mini stories going on within it, but they never feel disjointed or disconnected or like no. they're not happening in the same world. I mean, it'd be very easy for this this relationship drama that's happening in this hospital to feel like it was happening in a different movie yeah, than this like, army-based shootout. Yeah, why is this happening? Yeah, there was yeah. all this other stuff going on. Yeah, but the way that the movie transitions from location to location is so good and so slick. Like, they're the first of the movie where we have the, the army base shootout. The army trucks leave with all the, like, gas mask soldiers and stuff on them, and uh -huh. they drive by the barbecue joint, yeah. which is where Fergie is. Yeah. And the camera just, like, it's tracking the, the, the military vehicle, and then it's like, oh, who's this over here? 
starts tracking like Fergie's character. Right. And you pick up on that storyline. And they use the uh, they use a sign that says military base two miles a lot to do that connecting. Yeah. To where like actually like that is what happens with Fergie is like she drives by it one way and then when we see the army truck pass by Cherry we see them pass by it going the other way so we know they're going away from the base and she's yeah. going toward the base yep. and then she gets eaten gives you a sense of the George Graffy yeah the George Graffy of yeah, the location you do feel connected with George Graffy I can't believe we talked about all these characters and forgot to mention motherfucking Tom Savini oh yeah Tom Savini's in there <laughs> Tom Savini is in this dude which uh, you know again he's in Dust Till Dawn uh, Chief Tolo or Officer Tolo I, I think that's yeah. right and his character is a Tom Savini character in a movie. He's fucking yeah. awesome, does crazy shit, and gets completely mauled. Gets killed in an awesome way. I yeah. wonder if that's something that he requests specifically, or <laughs> if it's something like directors want to do for him. I th- well, because like we talked about it on the From Dust Till Dawn episode. Go check that out from like two years ago. In a minute, we talked about how like on from dust till dawn it's very clear that there were a ton of different makeup artists just getting to do whatever they wanted with the way they thought a vampire should look and it seemed obvious that that dick gun probably was tom savini had to like be. he probably brought it to set like yeah i'll have this and robert rodriguez was like fuck yes you will awesome <laughs> So Rodriguez knew, like, if I bring Tom Savini on, he's going to bring, like, he's going to make the character. He's going to decide what to do. So I'll bring Tom Savini in and maybe he'll, like, bring in some of his own effect. And he obviously did because there's the body cast of Tom Savini that you see, like, you can see it on it's his in Instagram. He's, he's made a yeah. million of them. He's had it around forever. That cast is fucking famous. That yeah. thing has been in some hits, man. Yeah, so he brought it, and they tore it up, and it was fun. Like, Rodriguez knew, like, if I bring Savini on, he'll bring something to the table that'll be fun. I love that he is, like, a fully trained police officer that that gun punches. He gun punches. It's like, you know when the you shoot a gun that is coming out at, like, 60 feet per second yeah. like it's just going so goddamn fast but he that's not enough for him uh-uh. he's just uppercutting and then pow like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. what a dumb just idea but add it's like, so awesome add an extra bit of foot per second <laughs> yeah dude some extra impact on that thing it's more It'll effective feel that, that way. one yeah god dude it's so good and also too just going with the savini pedigree you know uh greg nicotero did the special effects in this who's oh, a, yeah. a student of Tom mm-hmm. Sabini yeah and they they tried to make it look as authentic to the old uh, grindhouse type of pictures yeah. as they could so it, it looks great it looks great how do you think the zombies in this look they're not necessarily like, zombies they're, yeah, they're infected more like, yeah they're yeah. more like infected and they're all like they kind of look like fucking uh, Benjamin Grimm the thing from the Fantastic Four they they're do. all craggy and they're lumpy. craggy and, and gross and I love it when uh, Bruce Willis starts going into that like zombie mode yeah. he's like this weird like mutated looking zombie and that's where the film starts getting like really uh-huh. burnt out and like curved at the edges yeah. so it just looks even like weirder uh-huh. so I, mean, cool. I dug that it looked great i really dug it. i like the tarantino zombie was cool too it had that uh-huh. thing that looked like it was straight out of the thing where like that pod drops and like the tentacle things shoot out of it or that uh-huh. might have been bruce willis i can't remember one of the uh, no, two. No, no, I, I don't remember which one that was. Yeah, you know what I'm anyway. talking about, though? Yeah, like, I do. The I, know what you're talking. I thought that out. was his dick, right? The, I, like, his right. dick yeah, starts stripping so. off, and then it just, like, starts doing that. Snakes out and yeah. stuff. Awesome. Yeah, the special <laughs> effects and the way the zombies look in this, I think, I think are great. And they're varied, too. Like, they don't yes. all just look exactly the same. Yeah, Some are, like, lumpier and nastier Robert than Robert Rodriguez is obviously inter- interested in that idea of just letting a few makeup artists do their thing. Yeah, like I get it when you feel like you have an absolute vision and you want it to look very specifically. But Robert Rodriguez gets what a lot of people used to seem to get. When you got a makeup artist, this person is one an artist. <laughs> They're creative. They can come up with cool ideas. Yeah, and if they come up with the cool idea, it's probably because they've been thinking about it and know how to do exactly that. Yeah, that's their wheelhouse. So it's gonna be quicker. That too. And they're going to enjoy it because it's something they wanted to do. So they're going to want to work with you again. Right. 
Like right. he's always thinking ahead and thinking of the economics of it in a very bright way. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm dig. I I really dig the way Robert Rodriguez puts a movie together. Yeah, definitely. Because it's like you said, this whole thing just reeks of these people had a lot of fun yeah. making this movie. This had to be a blast from start yeah. to finish. Whether you're talking about storyboarding this thing out, doing the soundtrack mm-hmm. scenes like that would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, it seems like they had a damn great time making this thing so one of the biggest treats of this movie that we just have to talk about too and again we could talk about this on the death proof episode but whatever dude the fake trailers in this are an absolute yes. treat and it's even cooler when you find out like how much work they put into them and how they were done by completely different directors and stuff yeah i mean the one that robert rodriguez did is machete yeah which is danny trejo with his fucking he's danny trejo like yeah. we all know danny trejo now as danny trejo but like i think this is kind of one of the things like machete was Help one of the things on that the cemented him as like it's fucking Danny Trejo. Yeah. Well, it's cool, though, because I think he's Rodriguez's cousin, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. I think they're, yeah, they're related in some way. And I think he just kept putting him in movies over and over because he's like, I believe in this guy. Like, yeah. this guy's fucking cool. Yeah, because Tre- Trejo, like, he went to prison, prison for... Yeah. And, and, like, his first role was, like, I'm a prisoner in prison. Yeah. <laughs> they're shooting at the prison, I True mean. True story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, the Machete is just so over the top and amazing like it the, seems real the tagline of it is <laughs> when you might hire machete to kill the bad guy you better make sure it's not you <laughs> so good man what i love all that stuff where that, that dude is like where's my daughter and wife and and then it's like he's, he's making out with with both them. of them yeah. <laughs> It's so dumb and just like so exploitive and trashy. Yeah, it's great. And then of course you got Cheech in there as like uh-huh, his the brother crooked who's priest. A, a priest. Yeah, it's so good. And of course they got made into a real movie. Did you ever see? The I movie haven't seen. It. I was gonna watch it for this, but it wasn't streaming anywhere. But oh I, man, yeah. I next time I get an opportunity, I'll watch it. It's pretty much exactly what you're thinking. Yeah, it's basically that. exactly yeah. what you think. Yeah, it's, it's what you saw in the trailer, but as a whole a movie longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's great. I love that one, man. We've also got uh, Werewolf Women of the SS. Yeah, okay. So this one was one. So uh, Quentin Tarantino... Okay, so basically the reason they did this is that Quentin Tarantino used to do these double feature nights at his house. Yeah, yeah. And he'd just invite friends and stuff. And he would actually include in the double feature, he would include cool trailers. And so they thought like, you know... That's awesome. What a geek. He like, is. He's an absolute geek. fucking geek. I love yeah. it. They decided like, oh, it'd be cool if we both just made a like a fake trailer to go with it too. So like they had Machete and they had his... What was his supposed to be? They didn't end up doing it. Yeah, I was going to say he didn't have he one. He didn't there, end up think. doing one. But Robert Rodriguez had done one and I think um, they got Eli Roth to do Thanks Killing. Killing. And then uh, Rob Zombie approached him at some award show... And he was like, look, I got this idea for a Grindhouse preview. It's called Werewolf Women of the SS. And Sold. Robert Rodriguez was like, yes, Done. do it. Yep. Um, so, yeah, Werewolf Women of the SS. Apparently, uh, he shot enough to make a 30-minute, like... I would love to see it. I would, too. It would be very interesting. That's the thing. When you watch it, it actually looks like there were scenes and a plot line like kind of figured yeah. out like there's like this outdoor boxing match in the snow going it's on crazy. And shit. yeah and then you got nick cage shows up in there <laughs> with like a horrible super fake like fu manchu mustache mm-hmm. amazing. It's amazing i would totally see it i would yeah. absolutely watch it if, yeah that 30 minutes release just release it yeah just put that isn't out. that sort of his thing like he's moving towards more independent releases just release it man. yeah how's about that I love that trailer. I thought that it was fun and just stupid and funny and seemed real enough. Yeah. That like that could have been a remake of something that Definitely. actually was made in the 70s. Because like it is the it was something there. The the original title of some thing that he was kind of working off was was something women of the SS. Yeah. yeah and it, and it, but uh, it was way more normal. Yeah. Well, I think it was biker women of the SS. Maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But yeah. this is making it werewolf women. Even that's like fucking way fucking crazy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome, man. My favorite fake trailer in there was Don't, which is done by Edgar, Edgar Wright. Wright. Yeah. Which I found that out afterwards. And then like I went back through and rewatched it and it's like, yeah, Nick Frost and mm-hmm. all kinds of people. All of his, yeah. All the Edgar Wright there. folks. Yeah. yeah. That blonde lady that's in Hot Fuzz, that's in the, the Romeo and Juliet play. 
the yes. idiot blonde woman, uh-huh. like she's in there. Mm-hmm. It's just full of like all the Edgar Wright people. Uh-huh. Dude, I love the way that that trailer looks. Yeah. It looks just so legit 70s I wonder and if shitty. he's thought about doing that one. I mean, because like... I would love it. I would absolutely love it if they did. There's no reason not. To. I, I feel if you're like thinking these of are seeing so, this movie, don't. Don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these would be such low budget things that it's like, I know why it's a huge risk and especially because grindhouse didn't do well again because harvey weinstein tanked it fuck you harvey um this didn't do well that kind of made it seem like well why do this but then machete did do well well enough to get sequel like right and then um there's there's another one we'll talk about in a little bit the the full story behind it but hobo with a shotgun was included as one of the trailers on uh later editions it was yeah uh, it was like voted on by fans it was a fan made Oh wow! Fake trailer, yeah, and then that that went on to become a movie. Yeah, but th- that wasn't in the original theatrical release. Yeah, I was gonna say I never saw the fake trailer for that. I never saw the movie either. Did you ever? No, see the I movie? haven't seen it. It's got Rutger I Howard. Heard that is <laughs> yeah. good. Well, here's the thing: is like like what you're talking about about how that those things could have been successful. My idea that I had while I was watching this man in a perfect world, uh-huh. this movie would have come out. You know, more in the age where social media and interaction between fans and uh, directors and content creators uh-huh. and stuff was more common. Could you just imagine if Grindhouse was a series? That would be great. So the first one was the the main features are by Rodriguez and Tarantino. But then... A handful of fake trailers. handful of fake trailers. Then they pick the ones that seem most popular. Exactly. Make it. Yeah. Do the same thing over yeah. and over and over. Like Grindhouse 2 is yeah. Werewolf Women of the SS and Don't. Uh-huh. And it's got fake trailers that are in there by a whole bevy. J.J. Abrams does a sci-fi horror right. trailer. Like all kinds of people. Maybe bring in people like Roger Corman who've made exploitation yeah. movies and have them make fake trailers. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then just based on votes and tweets and shit like that, whatever the most popular two are, that's the next one. It's genius. Why I, don't they do Robert that? Robert Rodriguez. Let's do this, Listen, man. Listen, dude. This, does yeah. this not sound like a Showtime series? Yeah. How is that Grind not House? a good idea? Yeah. It's a great fucking idea. That's, I mean, I'm that could say, be a Shutter exclusive. Non-trademark Dead and Lovely. Yeah. Because no, I just want to see it happen. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez. But we also bring us on. Also that. Uh, you know, consulting producers. Yeah. We don't need well, we'll do too a fake, much control. Hey, we'll do a fake trailer for... Uh, Meth House Massacre. Yeah, which will be the <laughs> entirety of the film. Yeah, which will be Grindhouse 6. I actually 6. did start writing the rest of the film. Yeah. Um, and, and it could be, but it like, it, it became so, because it's hard to keep a character amoral. Anyway, I started writing, but I, I think it would be best as a five minute short, but that, yeah, exactly. We could do that. Robert yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah, get Holla on it. Holla at us sometime. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thanks Killing by Eli Roth is definitely the best thing Eli Roth has ever done. Well, you said that last week about him playing Donnie the Bear Jew. <laughs> I guess so. But he made Do those tie? Kill. Maybe. They're, I mean, they're probably I'll about tie. I don't know. Donnie, though? That, it's pretty awesome. That was awesome. Man. I love that Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving feels so much like Black Christmas. It does. Yes. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's exactly what, like, because Black Christmas started the, the holiday, uh, the idea of holiday horror, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You go for the original. It's awesome. And it's just so like gross and stupid. There's like that girl jumping on the trampoline and the guy's under there with like the knife <laughs> and just like right as her like ass drops on the trampoline. Oh, the, God. the shot cuts and stuff. Oh. It's so good and yeah. just so nasty. He like ties up granny and serves her like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> it's so good. If you could see any one of these turn into a real movie, which one okay. would it be? For me, it's don't. You know what? For me, it might be Werewolf Women of the SS. I would totally watch it. Because I think that's right up Rob Zombie's. You could do it. Like, the thing. Ali, like if if you let him do exploitation and just do it like the way yeah. he wants it i bet it could be real good and let it be silly and let, let it, it be have silly, this, yeah. this 50s campy schlock thing yeah that he kind of put his toe into during the first third of house of a thousand corpses but then yeah abandoned. but then pulled off of that yeah yeah if we just let him do the silly mm-hmm. b-movie thing that would be great i'd be way on deck yeah i would absolutely watch that yeah the fake trailers were totally a treat yes they are and a real surprise whenever we saw this in the theater is one of my favorite things about it i really love planet terror man you know i think we're kind of ready to to wrap it up here yes, give our final are. thoughts on the flick like to me you know i was surprised whenever i pulled this movie up to watch it and i was like how long is this thing and it's like an hour hour 40 an hour 40 yeah because in my so head... So with the missing reel, it would have been two hours. Yeah. yeah. Like, in my mind, 
Grindhouse was like two, maybe 70 minute things. Like in my head, they were short. I think they were shorter when they were shown together. I know for sure Death Proof was. Was it? Yes. Okay. So may- maybe maybe it was shorter when you first saw it. I, again, again, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure about it. But in my head, I was like, okay, you know, Planet Terror was short. Death Proof was a little bit longer. But it was surprising to me to see actually how long that it is. Because to me, yeah. the whole thing just blows by. I, I feel, I don't think that it gets slow. I don't think there's a lull, but like, I just didn't feel like it blew by for me, okay. but th- I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of liked living in it, but it, yeah, thing, it didn't right. feel too fast. Right. But I, I yeah, I, I can see what you're talking about. There are a lot of like quick action scenes in succession and like, I don't know that I, I felt like the restaurant fire scene seemed to last a long time, okay, which was yeah. actually, I think part of the camp. Because they're actually in a burning building just, like, hanging out. Yeah. It's like, this thing's burning down. Like, yeah. you can't be in here. It's like a thousand degrees inside. Yeah. Makes zero sense. No, no oh, sense. and the fucking mini bike. I can't believe the we forgot to bike. talk about the mini that's, bike. That's a definite Rodriguez list thing where he was yes. like, I got access to this mini bike. I don't have a motorcycle, but, yeah, probably, fucking like, my bike. kid or my nephew has this fucking mini bike. So, <laughs> and, and Freddy's small enough to ride it. Yeah. So. I wonder if that actually was his kids. Because, like, that was Rebel, his, his son. Yeah. I wonder if that actually was his pocket yeah, bike. And maybe he just like, brought it to set or something. It for, yeah. yeah. It's like, we could rent a motorcycle or just use this. Because this would be funnier for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb and funny, man. jumps on that tiny little pocket bike. Pocket bikes were like a thing for five minutes. Five minutes, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I remember seeing lots of like really early videos and stuff uh-huh. like, on YouTube and things of like people <laughs> riding around in these little tiny things. Yeah. And then they just went the way of the dinosaurs. Too well, bad. Probably where they should go. Yeah. Yeah. If you got hit by a car, you're annihilated oh. on one of those <laughs> Yeah. And you're not very visible because you're just like, yeah, you're like this. hunkered up and low to the ground. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. But I love this flick, man. Like, think of it this way. That hour and 40 that this takes, that's as long as Frontiers was. Oh, yeah. This is way quicker than Frontiers. Frontiers and way felt, more interesting and fun. Oh, God. Yes. Frontiers felt like, well, there went my entire night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because now I got to think about this shit for the rest of my life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this just seemed to to whiz by in comparison. I mean, yeah. maybe that's the thing. It's like maybe because we have done some movies recently that were kind of like grueling and shitty. Yeah. Maybe that made this just like more fun to get into. Yeah. You know? I would say that's true. Uh, I loved it. All the acting's great. Special effects are fucking awesome. Even when the effects are like not awesome and obviously green screen still are awesome. Yeah. Because... Uh, it, it just fits. Again, it loves Even being a movie. This is a movie that awesome. loves being yeah. a movie. Yeah, it's just like, this isn't awesome, but you get what we're going for in this moment. Yeah. Like, that's actually pure, like, that exploitation grindhouse sort of thing, where it's like, you buy into it because you want it to be what it's what it wants to be. Yeah. Like, even if it's not perfect, you're like, yeah, but that was still cool. Still sick. Yeah. I'm always a sucker for any movie where a helicopter gets to chop up a lot of people. <laughs> I'm always so on board awesome. for that. Oh, and also, too, dude, there's a lot of bodies getting hit by cars in this. Uh-huh. Like, the big army truck hits a bunch yeah. of zombies, and they're just blood bags. The, yeah, it's just a juicy pow, movie. Pow, pow. It's a very juicy movie. <laughs> very goofy. Which is a positive, we're saying. I think so. Okay, yeah, good. super juicy movie. Love it. Funny. It makes me laugh. It makes me squirm. Uh-huh. I will always watch this, and I think this is seriously like a... I'm going to toss this thing like a high, like nine, maybe nine and a half. You've done nothing it's wrong. It's just great. You've it's made just it. great. You've chosen wisely. I want Rodriguez to do more. I want to see more Grindhouse movies. Again, do our series idea. That's yeah. a fucking great I idea. I love that idea. I, I would love to see that played out because you could do it with so many directors like ty west Who, dude. Oh my fucking, fucking God. nail this. A ty west Grindhouse movie. Yeah. He would nail this. I am on board as all fucking hell yeah. for that. That would be amazing. That, that should have been be the great. first guy I thought of. <laughs> yep. So damn, we could. Yeah. I. 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 If anybody can hook us up <laughs> with Robert Rodriguez, we uh, like to talk. We would like to talk. We like to talk to troublemakers because he does. Uh, he does have his own network. Yeah. The El Rey Network. Yeah. So he could just start it on his own television network. Might be that. Holla at us. Yeah. Um, yeah, this movie's great. I, I really don't, like, I don't have any great things to say in summary other than yeah. it's fucking awesome. Like, it's so fun and great. And what can you complain about? It's not even supposed to be great. It's not even supposed to be great, and it is. Yeah. It's like, it's like, um, 
It's like when you get a substitute teacher, you won't remember this probably. Nope. <laughs> when you have a substitute teacher and and you come in, you're like, fuck, we're going to substitute because the teacher you normally have is cool. Mm-hmm. And then you have the substitute and you're like, fuck, they're going to be because there's substitutes who are just dicks no matter what. Okay. You walk in and they're like, candy for everyone. Oh, candy. Let's have fun. Yeah. And you're like. Fuck yes! Hell yeah! This is not what I expected, but I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie is like it, all all you could expect is it it can't be worse than it promises to be. That's a that's a great slogan right there. It can't be worse than it promises to be, and it's not. It's better than it promises to be by tons of magnitudes. So yeah, I think I think you weren't even going you weren't going. To, too exaggerated. Nine and a half. Yeah. This is a fucking treat. I got nothing to complain about. Mm-hmm. So good, man. Well, next week on this show, we've got another one that, I mean, spoilers, is going to be up in this same territory. I'm so yeah. excited to cover next week's flicks. We're going to be talking about Evil Dead 2. Oh, man. Which is a treasure. We got we got a few great ones coming up, but yes. Evil Dead 2 is, I'm so excited for. And this is one that you dead and lovely listeners voted on for the conclusion yeah, yeah, of we just, Grime A. Yeah, they voted on Planet Terror and Evil Dead 2. I am so excited to get to do it. Yeah, it's been a while since I watched it. It has been a while for me, too. The last time I watched it was probably about a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's so silly and gross and it's like is it a remake is it a sequel yeah because it's got like it's got so many qualities of the first but it's so like wacky i should probably watch the first one again it's such a good movie that's fucking amazing that's a good episode we did too back we in the did day that mm-hmm. yeah we did that indeed so be sure to tune in next week for that in the meantime you guys be sure to go on itunes and rate and review this podcast really seriously helps us out a lot i've seen a couple Mm -hmm. reviews pop up recently we appreciate them very 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 much Mm -hmm. so you guys Mm -hmm. keep on doing that because we're showing up in the search engines and stuff more and more and more when you just look up horror podcast or dead and level or anything like that and now when you look up steven spratling you hardly ever see my dick pics anymore yeah they're getting buried i mean you they're there yeah if you look yeah yeah. if you go there were so many of them yeah just send them out to everyone well yeah and mostly it was what's wrong with this yeah (laughs) why does it look like a baked potato that's been burnt what happened <laughs> yep. so yeah, yeah you guys be sure to rate review on itunes seriously helps us out a ton it just takes you a second to do that if you guys enjoy the show and just want to say hey boys boys i like what you boys are doing i'd like to say thank you with my dollar papers and currency hey guess what we're on patreon you can give us your money sick dude patreon.com slash dead and lovely yes indeed Mm -hmm. just got a couple basic tiers set up with some basic little perks and things like that we'll be adding more as we go along yeah we're we're already getting to close to a point where we'll be able to start making some merch oh yeah you can wear our show i would like to wear our show yeah keeps people from being bored keeps people from being naked that's true. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty good. A way lot to of go benefits. Close. A lot of benefits. Yeah, way to go, clothes. So you guys be sure to check out that Patreon and support us if you like us. Steve, where can they follow us on? Social media. Uh, Instagram and Twitter at Dead Lovely Pod. Dead Lovely we Pod. We have a Facebook group, Dead and Lovely. Blah, 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 blah. Facebook. Yes. You can also reach us on the internet through electronic mm, mail yes. at Dead and Lovely Pod at gmail.com. Where else are we? You're there everywhere. We're all over the place. We're on the wind. We're in the sky. We're on Spotify now. Oh. We're in the, the sparkle in every child's eye. Special announcement. If you've made it this far and you normally listen on SoundCloud, I don't know how you made it this far because this episode I don't believe will be up on SoundCloud as none of our future episodes will be. Yeah. We cannot afford to pay them to host. Um, we had to move to Podbean. It wasn't, it wasn't the price itself it's we would have to keep paying soundcloud to keep uploading on soundcloud and it costs more than what we currently pay on podbean but we're on spotify now so yeah if, really if, if uh yeah and we're uploading stuff on youtube and everything as well oh uh, yeah we're, there's we're, plenty of ways to listen i mean yeah to we're, on, we're on itunes we're on uh, spotify we're on stitcher yeah we're on um crap podbean but apparently has a lot of listeners. Yeah, we, we've got cool. a bunch of new listeners from Podbean. Hey and guys. it's all free. However you listen to it, it's yeah. all free. So whatever avenue you choose to use, you can keep hearing the sultry, soothing sounds of our voices. Wow! All for the cost of zero dollars. I'm just kind of seeing how low I, I feel can go like now. I feel like 
everybody's genitals have melted into puddles by the end of this episode. Oh, yeah. Just oh, like, yeah. oh damn. Oh, yeah. Everything is at least al dente. <laughs> For all of our male listeners listening to the show by now. <laughs> you guys are great. I'm going to miss my Flim voice, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna it miss probably it won't be here next week. But, Damn. You know, it's a shame. I just want everybody to Uncle enjoy Flynn. it while they have it. <laughs> and while I have you. <laughs> you guys have been great. We've been dead and lovely. Check us out next week. Peace out. Check, check. Checkity, check. Checking Checkin the mics. Checking the mic. Look at you. Look how strong your levels are. Man, I'm strong leveled, they call me. You're on input two. I'm back you down just a little bit. Keep on now, going with me. Is this this tool over here, this thing in the orange, is yeah. that a dick scalder? That's the old penis scalder. You just put your dick in the middle, turn it on. And yeah. Some people use it for soldering things. Mm, I, uh, I use it to seal up penises. <laughs> It's a penis sealer. <laughs> I'll solder your dick hole. Yeah, exactly. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Is that a dead dad song? Dead dad soldered dick hole. <laughs> dick hole dead solder rampage. Dead solder <laughs> dick hole. Actually, I think theirs would be called Solder and Gamora. <laughs> Dude, I should totally make like a video on my channel teaching people how to solder. Yeah. Only it's all metal themed and it's yeah. called Solder and Gamora. Solder and Gamora. That's pretty solid. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs>